completely understandable. I would ask that we be remembered to be professional and to be kind. I, we have students in the room, so I would ask for you to keep that in mind when you're speaking. Um, if um, we, if, if if need be, um, if there's a, if there's any uh, yelling out from the audience, I will stop the speaker at that time and allow them the time to speak if you want to hear from everybody. Um, if there is um, anything that we um, that I feel is violent or disrespectful, I will um, I may stop the meeting at that point for a recess. Fair enough. All right, and we do want to hear from you. Um, I also want to say that this is not an, um, the, I, I'm seeing a lot of, um, on the books that he did give, this is not an agendized item. Therefore, the board cannot by law respond to any of your comments. It is not that we don't care. It is not that we have not read your email, and it's not that we feel the same or that we feel differently. It's just by law, we cannot <coughs> respond to you tonight. Um, but we will respond, but just not tonight or anything. Okay. With that, um, I'll be done lecturing and we'll move on to the speaker, Darren Nelson. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity. My name is Darren Nelson. I've been a resident of this great community for 20 years. My wife, Jamie, and I have two boys, a senior at LHS and a sophomore at 12 Bridges. Uh, I am concerned with the current path and agenda the district seems to be pushing towards. I could choose to turn my head and, it, and ignore it since I only have two more years to go, but I feel that I need to speak up for those who are not aware and to protect the future. The book by Angie Thomas, The Hate You Give, you say is a book about leadership and inspiration. I strongly disagree. This book, Angie's First, in my opinion, uh, delivers nothing but hate, racism, and a strong message to defund the police. The clip notes of this so-called bestseller are a 16-year-old black female attends a party and there's a gang shooting. A friend drives her home, gets pulled over by a white police officer whose badge is apparently 115, which is penal code for white-collar uh, fraud crime or mortgage fraud. Officer pulls a friend out of the vehicle to run a background on him, tells him to stay there. He ignores the command, returns to the car to check on his friend, and the cop shoots him and kills him. When do we stop, start teaching our kids to ignore what an officer of the law asks you to do? It continues with our family, feels cops are covering up and there's no prosecution towards the officer. It is results in protests and riots. Multiple other incidents of hate towards police lead to TV interviews, affiliation gang members, and includes destruction of property and injuries to others. That's not what I call peaceful protests. This doesn't even cover the vulgar language of the F word used 89 times multiple articles from great leaders. I have read multiple articles from great leaders and none of them have yet had to use the F word to deliver their message. Angie wrote many other books and some with multiple authors. She collaborated with five other authors in the book Blackout, which was six different stories all uh, tying together about growing up and relationships. Sounds like a much better book than this one. Angie stated in an interview with the Daily Telegraph that she aims to show truth and tear down stereotypes. And it's important that the white community listen to the grievances of the BLM. In this book, she shows the truth, all right? That truth incites racism, white people can't be trusted, and supports a corrupt agenda. BLM is one of the most hate-inspiring, corrupt organizations, spending over $10 million. If you want to read about that, follow Candace Owens of The Greatest Light Ever Sold. I'm a captain of Cal Fire for 24 years. I'm a paramedic for 21 years. I mention this because in the fire service, we read, study, and follow great leaders. I only mention this because the great Navy SEAL Admiral William McRaven. He had given multiple commencement speeches and attended multiple conferences amongst all career fields, sharing his leadership in Navy SEALs. Even though you don't, are not a Navy SEAL, it's applicable to everybody today. He starts off with 10 simple tasks. The first one starts the day with the task completed. Find someone to help you through life. Respect everyone. Life is not always fair. Move forward. Don't be afraid to fail often. Take risks. Face down the bullies. Step up when times are tough and lift up the downtrodden and never give up. Angie doesn't even reference two of these in her book. Chris Rock recently said Americans are addicted to attention. That's exactly what this book was. Her first book was to draw attention to support her agenda. 
It debuted number one on the New York Times in 2017, but it was also one of the 10 most challenging books in the next four years. There are 10 seconds if you can. Yep, this book has no place within our classroom and is insane to think it should be. Thank you for your time. Thank you.
we're still going to learn about it, so we should be able to consume content about this and learn about this in school in a safe environment where we can be challenged by our peers and learn new opinions on the subject. I'd also like to say that um, the way that we're taught about this book, we're not having an agenda imposed by us by our teachers. I had to read this book last year in my English class, and instead of being told that this is how I should believe about the book, this should be my thoughts, I was instead given an environment along with the nearly 40 other peers in my room that allowed us to grow our own opinions and change our own perspectives on the issue organically by giving us assignments that challenged our thinking by talking about the content of the book as well as talking about our opinions on the content of the book. No one's opinions were censored. We were all respected and we were all given an environment to flourish and discuss the controversial topic at hand. I'd also like to talk about how we should have our First Amendment rights in the classroom. There shouldn't be any, even according to our First Amendment, there should be no law that prohibits the free speech of someone or the freedom of press, and books apply under the freedom of press. We should be allowed to read and we should be allowed to learn about controversial subjects in the classroom. And even if they are controversial, they shouldn't be censored because, once again, these are real issues that affect real people in the real world. And our fourth point I'd want to make is there's a lot of mis like there's a lot of uh, clarifications that need to be made about the content of the book as well as the author. Let's start off with Angie Thomas. She's a 34 year old black woman with a BFA in creative writing. In her youth, she witnessed events similar to those depicted in the Haiti Give. She has a very important perspective on the manner and one that should be respected because she's seen it firsthand. Unlike many of us in this room. And on top of that, the book's contents, although incredibly controversial, do depict accuracy in a lot of the events that we've seen where innocent people of color have been killed at the hands of cops. And those cops have gotten away with very few charges or, and very little justice. Thank you. Thank you. by the time you're 20, you have no heart. But if you're not conservative by the time you're 50, you have no brain. Now, I'm not, what I'm here to assert is that our belief should no longer bind us to the defense of our freedom and the defense of our thoughts. So disregard all of that. This isn't an issue of what our, what our beliefs are. This is an issue of banning books, right? If you do not think it belongs in the classroom, if you believe that we should ban the hate you give, that's a sign of trouble. Banning books is one step removed from burning them. Show me a society that allows the banning of books, art, and provocative ideas that is thriving. If we are to oppose the blight that is fascism, we must start here before it escalates beyond our reach or snowballs faster than we can run. I think that The Hate You Give is an insightful book, and um, that's all I have to say about that. Thank you. Byron Chapman. And drop it, right? Uh. Good evening. My name is Byron Chapman. I've uh, lived here in this wonderful city here for uh, close to 12 years, my wife and I, and uh, it really is a, a wonderful place. Uh, the thing that brings me here this evening is uh, uh, I belong to uh, what I consider to be uh, an absolutely dynamic organization. Uh, we refer to it as ATOU. That's an acronym for a touch of understanding. Um, their headquarters is out of Granite Bay. Uh, I found out about them, oh, some 13, 14 years ago. Uh, went through their program just like uh, the, the, the students that we go to. Uh, unlike my day, which really goes back a ways, uh, we looked forward to taking a field trip. You get on the bus and you go somewhere, and that was terrific. Well, a touch of understanding, um, they've been around almost 29 years now. And their whole approach is we take the bus to the school. Everything that we do, the, the mission or the goal of the organization really is to encourage acceptance and also inclusion for everyone. And that literally means everyone. 
So what we do is we take the bus to the school. Uh, our focus group is fourth graders. However, we've gone from fourth graders to seniors. We've done colleges. We've done groups, um, uh, organizations, and such. Uh, so far, just a couple of things that we do bring to the school. Uh, we bring 30 white canes. Uh, we have a prosthetics table, braille table, sign language table, autism table, and 30 manual wheelchairs. And what we do is we divide those students up in half. Let's say we have uh, 100 students. 50 of those will be going through those stations that I just mentioned. The other at that point are in another room and it's in the speaker's portion. And we normally have three speakers, and they're, they're varying because we want to get the students uh, as much of a look at what we can and what we have out there. Anything from autism to sight impaired to wheelchair, whatever it may be. Uh, I've had the opportunity to be there and do all of those items as well as being a speaker. And what they do in literally three hours is absolutely just amazed me when I came on board a long time ago. And, and in doing so, uh, we encourage in the speaker's portion for those students to ask that individual, whatever their story is, questions. In fact, we encourage it to the point where we make sure that everyone realizes that this is a no zone as far as we want to hear every question you possibly have. And the reason for that is over the years, we've found in the organization that fourth graders are absolutely the key focus group because one, uh, they have the skills to be able to read, to write, to understand, and I, I can't say this particular piece enough. They ask some of the most interesting and wonderful questions that far exceed what I've been involved with. So I'm here simply to give you information on a touch of understanding. I was asked by George to do this. I do realize that you do not have, uh, don't answer any questions or anything. However, I do have just some handouts for you to hang on to for future information. My name and address is on there. Uh, I, I encourage you to look at that. We currently now and have been for many years, thank goodness. Uh, I do go to the 12 Bridges Elementary School and we do presentations there. And uh, all the teachers as well as the students who have treat us with nothing but kindness. And uh, for that, I appreciate your time. Thank you so very much. grinding on girls so hard that they should be wearing condoms. References teen drug and alcohol abuse. 
refers to the main character's school as a white person's school. Talks about lame ass white kids parties where kids pop pills and listen to Taylor Swift. The F word is used over 85 times. Multiple references as cops, calling them fucking pigs. The main character says daddy would never let me date a white kid. Refers to white young boys with their damn sex drive. White kids like my son, my son at home right now, refer to them as waiters because they wear Jordans. The white kids should wear Vans uh, and Chucks, not Jordans. References the main character's hand going down her boyfriend's chest and feeling the bulge in his pants. I need to know how that's appropriate for my young son. If this is how you teach leadership, then someone should be fired. I need to know why an entire district thinks this is okay. Do you allow your students to talk to girls and call them bitches and hoes? I certainly hope not. Can they say the word fuck in a classroom? I certainly hope not. What are you hoping to teach these kids whose parents are cops? Please tell me why this was the best choice. Please tell me how you're gonna earn my faith in the district back. Hi, I'm uh, Gus Murphy. Uh, for those who don't know, I have two uh, young children in the district. I haven't read the book, so I'm not going to talk about the book. I'm going to zoom out. I had a whole speech prepared, but Cal threw me off. He said something really cool. Uh, his comment about liberals and conservatives made me do some thinking. So th thank you, Cal. Um, when I was in the military, I went to the Middle East a few times, and uh, I was there to instill democracy. Democracy is awesome, right? Let's let those people vote. Let them be Americans. And uh, I was ugh, 19, 20, 21. I was super excited after what happened. I'm dating myself, Twin Towers. Uh, but what I found out later is I was pretty much there to broker oil deals. I didn't know it at the time. I was just gullible. I had a gun. I was proud. I was, thought I was, I was doing the right thing. Um, and I, I think I got tricked. And it happens. It happens when you're young. Another uh, cruel irony of life is that by the time you actually start listening to your elders, you are one. And I think that uh, that's, that's something that I, that I picked up a little late, too. I want to talk about the, the impetus behind this book. Um, I've often spoke about this, the California Teachers Association and their influence on education in our state and racial justice and uh, you know, the transgender issue. I see them as I do religion. They belong in the home, and there's a place for them in the home, with admitting that not everyone has a home. You can make great points on that, uh, Ms. Freeman. But when I see a child standing up for transgenderism and racism, what I usually find is kind of like a vegan cat. Generally, there's an adult doing the feeding. And uh, I, I know that that's not going to lend well with our youth, and I apologize to you. I don't mean to demean you. I'm saying that because I was you. And I miss the days when you were only sold to at the mall with red sale signs. And it's important to see what's happening in our nation. If someone runs out on the field during the Super Bowl, they don't show it because they don't want copycats. They don't want someone else being a streaker. But when there's a mass shooting, it's all they can talk about for two or three weeks. There is money in hate because you will keep watching and you will keep fighting. And I'm willing to bet you that 99% of the people in this room, when trapped in an elevator together, we're going to find a way to get along. Because you're good. I'm good. We have difference of opinions. But I respect you. I do. I do respect you. And, and I will hear you out. And I'm sorry we've reached this point. And I myself have been very vocal over the last three years. But the one thing I've maintained, that I trust Lincoln above the state of California. I trust this community above our politicians who take money, no matter what side you're on, right or left. Um, this book, I, I do believe, does not belong in the schools, but I say that because I believe not, I, there probably is some educational value to it to a degree, but I believe it was placed here um, because those in power want it there to further their agenda. And um, I, I encourage you to rem remove anything that, um, that, drives, that drives hate, whether it would seem uh, well-intentioned or not. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you. Hi, thank you guys all for being here. Um, 
I'm going to be honest, I have not read the book. I've heard a lot about it. I've heard a lot of different things. I've been too busy caring to deal with my daughter's dyslexia. Um, was <laughs> WPUSD just signed a contract with Youth Development Network. I had never heard of YDN prior to these meetings. I Googled it, checked out their website to learn about it because I just wanted to know. I was at two different board meetings in which this was discussed. I listened for hours of discuss I listened to hours of discussion regarding YDN. I heard the presentation, I heard teacher and community leaders speak. I heard the importance of this in our schools. I heard that it was wonderful and a great program for our schools. That is fantastic. Um, if I took away one key idea from all, everything that I read, it was inclusion. It was there, it was right there on their website to promote inclusion. I work at a school in Carmichael. The very next week, they had a YDM um, network, and it was great. Um, that's great, inclusion. Um, I understand that parents can opt out of this book and another will be assigned. My concern is with the separation. The students will have to get up and leave the classroom and go into another class. Reading this book and separating these students is doing the exact opposite of inclusion. You are segregating, if you will, the students. Um, what will this exclusion class look like? Will they be taught by a credential teacher? Will there be discussions taking place? Will it be independent study? I worry about the mental health concerns associated with separating these children for this assignment. Children with anxiety could become more anxious by having to be excluded from their class. They will be singled out and risk being made fun of. We are singling out these children. We are causing division. Um, my most important job is raising my kids. I have one shot. I'm raising my kids to be respectful and kind. Um, this book has the F word in it 92 times, I believe. That's not what I'm teaching my kids, but that's fine. I know they hear it, I know it's around. The fact that this book also says, F the police. If there is, God forbid, a school shooter, I am counting on that person over there to help these students. And for these kids to have to read, F the police. I think that's completely disrespectful. And even if you're teaching a lesson, just sit there and have them read at the police when he is the one that is going to save our kids. God forbid there's a problem. Thank you, Colleen. Maureen Henkelman? For listening to us. Um, I'm here about the book The Hate You Give. I really truly do not understand why this book has been selected due to its profanity, sexual contact, co content, and disrespect for authority. The profanity, in my family we don't use profanity. We choose not to, to cuss at each other or talk to each other in that way. We teach our kids not to use profanity. I'm sure it's at school when they're on the school grounds they hear it and I can't control what they hear but I can control what they leave, read. At least I've been able to control what they read, and I should be able to as their parent. The con sexual content in this book is completely inappropriate, period. Nothing more needs to be said on that one. My husband and I are raising our kids to have respect for adults, respect for authority. We tell them it's important to respect their parents, their teachers, their principals, their youth group leaders, and police. Reading a book that says F the police and completely goes against our values and what we are instilling in our children. And if we're having our kids read books that say F the police, how are we going to expect them to respect our teachers and our principals there on the school grounds? This book should not be an opt-out book. It should not be read by any freshman students. Separating them and having them go to another classroom is just creating and increasing a division. I'm asking that you listen to us parents, you hear us parents, and not have them be separated, not have this book be an option that is read in our school district, and we respectfully ask that you agendaize this item and remove, to remove this book from the assigned reading list. Now, I've been also coming to you for months, not only about dyslexia, so I also want to bring this to you. We are, William Jessup is having a forum on dyslexia, it's a two-sided thing, and I'm going to leave brochures out there for it. But for all of you who are interested in learning about dyslexia, they are going to have a great forum in March 22nd and March 29th, and they are great people to listen to, and I hope everyone here can go and listen and learn more about dyslexia. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. Scott Eady? This has nothing to do with the book. <laughs> It's been
been determined uh, recently in court records that Fox anchors lie, they know they're lying, and they do it even after acknowledging privately to their anchor peers that their sources are crazy, lying, and not believable. Rupert Murdoch acknowledged recently under oath that his anchors endorsed lies and that he allowed it for the money. Tucker Carlson's own argument in defending himself from a libel suit was that no reasonable person should believe him. The judge said that Tucker Carlson's show is obvious, <coughs> hyperbole, and bloviating. Yet many Americans think of Carlson as a news anchor. We, those of us who are against lying, which is everyone here, right? Against lying, right? <coughs> We're concerned about networks like Fox and their ilk. I mean, January 6th could have been entirely avoided if Fox and other right-wing media had just told the truth that there was no actual proof of fraud. There never was. Fox and others made a conscious choice to lie for ratings, for viewership, and for money. And thus, America's perfect 244-year record of peaceful transfers of presidential power was destroyed, just so Fox wouldn't lose market share to even bigger liars over on Newsmax. Tens of thousands of people are dead from COVID or in jail now because they trusted Fox anchors to tell them the truth. Murdoch didn't care. Tell people what they want to hear. It's profitable. I'm concerned in here now as just a teacher and a Lincoln citizen because some of Fox's constant lies are starting to run towards education. I'm concerned that any board members might still watch Fox and want to make decisions for our students based on false information from networks that recently have been proven to have no ethics, no regard for the truth, and no concerns about the consequences of lying to their viewers, even if those laws cause deaths or the attempted overthrow of democracy. Most parents and all our students in our district expect decisions made about education to be based on facts. Facts gained from dozens of other legitimate news sources. Parents and teachers don't want decisions based on anger and fear that those lies were intended to cause. It's been said, and it's so true, they got us fighting a culture war to distract us from their class war. Stations like Fox are designed to divide us, and it has worked brilliantly. Just look at our country the last six years. Everyone in this room should be on the same side. Right? We should all be united against the ultra wealthy and who have been who have bought nearly all our politicians, Republican and Democrat alike. If you think the biggest problem we face as Americans is that nearly half of the very decent people who are your friends and neighbors are woke, then those lying news anchors have done their job to divide you from us. Be angry at oligarchs like Murdoch, not at your compassionate neighbors. I mean, wasn't Jesus like one of the most woke people ever? So anyone, if you still do, please listen to Fox. Please try another station for a couple weeks. You'll be happier. You'll be less stressed. You'll be less angry. And I know I wanted that sound really angry. But it's not anger at you, dear board members, who I trust have the best of intentions for our district. It's anger at the needless deaths and avoidable tragedies that have been caused over the past few years by the constant despicable lies of Fox News and their ilk that, the tw that has twisted the thinking of decent American people for far too long now. Thank you for listening. because this is a discussion about curriculum, and since students are the group affected by curriculum, they should have a say in whether or not we change it. I gather data from LHS 10th graders about the books they read their freshman year, one of them being The Hate You Give. The survey asked them to rank the books they read their freshman year. <coughs> 136 students responded, and the survey shows that the majority picked The Hate You Give as their first choice novel. I also spoke to the freshman English teachers who taught the book last year. They all told me that student engagement was higher in their classes for The Hate You Give than with any other book they read. The teachers also stated that they received zero negative feedback from students or parents, but in fact received a lot of positive feedback, including one parent who decided to read the book herself after hearing about it from her child. 
I also spoke to two students who read the book last year. They said they loved it and that it was their favorite book they read. They said their classes were excited when they read it. One of the students I spoke to said her class was sad when the bell rang because they had to stop reading. These conversations and this data I've collected has shown me that The Hate You Give is clearly a book that students love. We should not take something out of the curriculum that students like. It's already difficult enough to get students involved and excited about school. Taking this book away will only say to these students that their opinions don't matter, and it will only discourage them further to be involved in their classes. On behalf of the students of LHS, I believe taking this book away will only hurt the students and their education. The data I gathered should be enough to prove that. Student voice cannot be ignored, and the students like the hate you give. No matter what your opinion is about the book, it affects no one except the students who read it. And the students who have read it have nothing but good things to say about it. Um, I have extra copies of my survey if anyone wants one, but that's the end of our program. Thank you, Ariana. Well, Bridges High School, Clara? Hi. Uh, can you hear me? No. OK, cool. Thank you. Um, <laughs> both uh, JV and varsity, varsity Boys Volleyball is facing off against Marysville today. Uh, varsity Boys Baseball is playing against Bella, Bella Vista, and vars Varsity Girls Softball is playing against West Park. And we have uh, Junior Prom April 22nd, and it's located at 12 Bridges, and the theme is Old Hollywood. Now, on for fun stuff. Um, I walked into the bathroom recently and overheard two freshman girls talking. One mentioned that they're trying to ban a book in English. The other said that she was sad because she liked the book, but neither of them were going to fight to read it. I mean, it's an amazing book. I couldn't put it down, but what average teenager is going to fight to do schoolwork? <laughs> in 2021, 39% of books to be banned were proposed by parents compared to the 1% of students who had problems with the reading. This completely backs up Ariana's data she got, gathered at LHS and every student here who was strong enough to speak tonight. It shows that this book isn't being restricted because of students' opinions, but rather parents. How many of you here are pushing for banning the book? And how many of you have actually read it? So many of our books that we've been teaching for years have been proposed to be banned. The Catcher in the Rye, A Wrinkle of Time, To Kill a Mockingbird, Harry Potter, Anne Frank's Diary, Lord of the Flies, Romeo and Juliet, Charlotte's Web, what books will we have left? If we ban every book we disagree with, we're not banning books anymore. We're banning independent thinking. One topic that politicizes the book is racism. How is it OK for me to learn about racism in Jim Crow laws, poll taxes, slavery, segregation, but not to read a book where a person includes her experience with racial injustice? There are, black, there are bad black people in the hate you give, and there are bad white people in the hate you give. It's not about dividing. It's about informing. Another issue brought to the table is cops. This book does not tell students to hate cops. It offers a strong, loving person who is a cop. Star, her aunt, her aunt is married to a cop. Her uncle is a cop. He is a good person. He loves people. He takes care of his family. He took care of Star when her father was in the, when her father was in prison. He is a good cop. There are good cops, but her best friend was killed by a black cop, as by a bad cop. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> this happened before. We've seen it in our society, and in terms of. Uh, sex and <coughs> vulgar language teens, we know about it. You're, you're not protecting anyone. The person that you're protecting is going to be an adult in a few years, and you can't expect to send them off and have them completely blindsided to the world. It's insane. Think about what you're terrified of your young adult discovering in this book. They already know. That's about all I got. Thanks.
key, our key club has started a recycling program that's and the funds that we get from recycling is going to be um, a donation to the school and a fundraiser for our school. So um, I have more information about that also for later. Great. Thank you, Shelby. Yeah, I'll keep this brief. First of all, I wanted to commend you for your articulate presentation. Uh, everybody here did a, a brilliant job. You really did. And I, I, my hat's off to you. Very good. Very nicely. Um, this past week, we've uh, had kind of an intensive meeting on facilities. And facilities basically uh, breaks down to money and how we get uh, improvements to the school and build new schools. And we were talking about that and uh, trying to figure out the best ways to spend the money that we have. And uh, it's not an easy question, but we're working on it. And uh, I, I hope that people here, when, when we come up with a decision, uh, will be pleased as, as they can. Uh, real quickly, uh, tomorrow I'm going to uh, the, the science fair. I'm taking my family, my grandchildren, my wife, my daughter, everybody. And I'm really excited about that. And anybody who doesn't know about it, uh, you, you should go. It's 5.30 to 8.30, and it's just going to be wonderful. It's, so consider going. It's probably not a thing you generally do on a Wednesday night, but I think you'll really enjoy having done it. And, but the last thing I want to say is I, I had the opportunity, kind of a rare opportunity, uh, to go and read to some first graders. And if you haven't done that, or if you haven't done it for a while, uh, it's, a, it's a, just a wonderful experience. They sit down on the carpet, as in the library, they sit down on the carpet in their little places. And I read a book called, what was it, uh, Dozens of Donuts. And it's about a bear who makes donuts for all her friends. Her friends eat all the donuts, and she doesn't get any. And then in the middle of the whole thing, she goes, roar, and she roars out that she didn't get anything. So her friends come and help her, and they have a party, and they, they all eat donuts. And it's, but the, the main thing is uh, just seeing the kids and, and seeing how much they want to learn and how excited they are about it. And uh, it's, it's really heartening, and uh, I, I, I'm thrilled that I was able to do it, and I plan on doing it again. So thank you. Thank you. Member Freeman? Okay. Um, well, I uh, would like to thank everyone for coming tonight, and I want to let you know I appreciate all your comments. Um, now to the fun stuff. Um, actually, uh, February 25th, I um, went to the track team dinner for the Lincoln High and Twelve Bridges uh, High School. Um, the pavilion was packed. There was over 320 <coughs> people there. Uh, my husband and his hunting club cooked, so of course the food was great. Um, <laughs> and uh, very happy. Uh, the track team um, we, they made over fifty-six thousand dollars. So that was amazing. Um, yeah. So if you the tickets sell out within a couple days, um, so uh, make sure you uh, look for it for next year. Um, Yesterday, um, I spent three and a half hours at um, Scott Lehman's, uh, Scott Lehman Elementary, um, and I had a really great conversation with uh, Mr. Gout, um, who is the principal, um, and I actually, I was in three classrooms yesterday. Um, I was in Mrs. Ball's uh, kindergarten class, and I actually taught a STEM lesson on how the potato grows. They let me teach about potatoes. I was so excited. <laughs> um, they actually, they're, uh, they're like, where did you get that knife? Because I had to cut the potato. And I'm like, oh, I, I, I you know, it's, it's not here. It's a fake knife. <laughs> um, but um, they actually, they um, read and did some presentations on it. And they actually helped me put the potato, um, the toothpicks in it, and set it in the water. And then showed them pictures on how they're going to, how it's going to work. So I told them. So yeah, it was very, that was very fun. I'm like, oh, it makes me want to work in the kindergarten room all the time. But um, then I actually, um, I also went into Ms. Parra's class and uh, <coughs> the first grade uh, uh, classroom and got to visit with them. And then I went into Ms. Van Niles' uh, fifth grade class and got to see what they do. So um, I spent three and a half hours there and I wasn't ready to leave. But, um, but I also met with uh, Ms. Uh, Pierce at Twill Bridges High School and uh, got a tour and um, saw the, some of the things that they were doing storage and um, on, and so that was very, very beneficial. So thank you very much. 
Um, last thing is I'm volunteering for Bingo for the 4th of July uh, tomorrow. Um, it's at the pavilion, and uh, they've asked me to help out, and they're actually letting me bartend. So, <laughs> I'm like, yes! So, that's all I have. All right, Member Um February 24th, I rent in um, third grade class with twins at Carlin C. Coffin, the good A. It was a lot of fun. Um, I got more hugs than I've gotten in the last year, I think. <laughs> they're excited. And, I gave them a ace afterwards of candy and then put them on that kind of mom. Um, <laughs> I went to the trap team fundraiser, spent way too much money, didn't win any dessert. I'm still bitter. People in this audience know who helped with me. I will be attending tomorrow night's uh, bingo for the 4th of July. I hope to see you again. Um, let's see, I'm sober grad that I'm vice president of Cambridge's <coughs> High School, um, combined with Hopeless's Booster Club, and did the fundraiser they auctioned off. I raffled off the Bruno Mars tickets, third row, two seats. So um, we had our first major donation from that of over $5,000 to start off our sober guy, which was exciting. And I want to say Chris Knudsen, um, Jen Bedwell, Bedwell from the um, foundation, and uh, of course the father Eric, who donated his tickets graciously. Thank you for us off. <coughs> Jamie Nelson, if you're here, I don't can't see. You're a great president, thank you. Because she's done, she's been working hard for us. So. Um, let's see. I'm going to the science fair tomorrow too with my third grade grandson. I'm very excited about this. I like the little people. They're fun. Um, it's been a hard two weeks as a new board member with everything that's been going on. Controversially, know that I, I value everybody's input. I wish I had heard more from parents who are in support of this book. I'm not hearing that. Um, I'm glad though I got to hear the student perspective tonight because it does help we're making decisions so i just want to know listening taking it all in and um i hope everybody will be pleased in the end that's all i got <laughs> so i also attended facilities um i don't know fire hose call it that. Um, those are always fun to understand the complexities of um school board fiscal things um, I went to Mr. Tao's biomed class because I can't get enough of those. Those folks, we had a conversation about um, outcomes of wrongful medicine and a real, some real dialogue about some of the consequences. Of most of these kids have the intent to go on and work in healthcare, which I think is amazing. And we had a con we had a conversation about what it feels like to do something wrong and then carry that around. And it was just incredible to hear their perspective on those things. Um, I went and spoke to. Uh, a freshman AVID class, uh, Ms. Hamasaki's uh, AVID class at Bridges High. Um, I would really highly encourage everybody with the job to go and just talk to young people about your job, what you like, what you don't, how you got there, how much money you make, or what, you know, in the range. Um, it's so hard, I think, as a young person to know where you might want to go until you can hear the perspectives of people doing those jobs. Um, I went from there because um, for profit had read a book and I wasn't going to be outdone, so I went and also read a book at Carly C. Coppin and I read The Grumpy Monkey, and um, <laughs> it was fitting. And at the end, just because I think the story is adorable, I tried to get some engagement from the young folks and said, you know, I was kind of a grumpy monkey until I got here and spent time with you guys, and now I'm, I'm in a great mood. And all of them simultaneously hugged me, and I've basically been crying ever since. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely delightful. Please do that again. Um, it's, it was pretty great. Um, I attended Portrait of Graduate. Um, tell you what I love about that program is it's less, let's ask the community what they all think, and that's business leaders, that's civil leaders, that's law enforcement officers, that's, that's firefighters, that's healthcare workers. Hey, what what is it that a, a graduate should look like, and how do we break that down into chunks and make sure we don't miss any parts? I thought that was a wonderful conversation. Um, after that, I spent a little bit of time uh, understanding a bit of the complexities around special ed and IEPs. Um, and then lastly, I just want to say, uh, you know, public speaking is hard, and I think what our young people did tonight is engagement, and I'm like here for it. Um, that is, I think, so important, is to, is to give them ownership, um, even if sometimes these issues don't go their way, because they may or may not be outside of their control for them to prop up enough confidence to stand in front of a room full of people 
and speak their mind. Um, I just feel like that's absolutely the process. And um, I very much commend all of you that took your time and that came out and spoke your, your truth. And I thought that, that was incredible. I appreciate that. And that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, so I attended um, on first, or last Wednesday, that was the first, the Farm Foundation meeting. And, um, you know, chickens and cows and goats are my. Um, lots of that happening, lots of new kids and new calves, um, new crops, they kind of the hay crop, which is cool so they can feed with all the animals. Uh, there's lots of grants happening, and the good thing about the grants, they're so innovative out there, and they're so fiscally responsible that they get these grants, and then they do, the kids do the work, and then they get to keep money. So um, that's just brilliant. I love the way they do that. I love that they have a work plan out there. Um, they also have a preserve uh, work plan that they're working on. It's an NRCS, I believe. Uh, it's a conservation plan out there where they can get grants for conserving um, certain areas of, of the land out there, which is I thought was really interesting. Um, they have um, the, I can't read my writing. Um, oh, they're going to be planting a pumpkin patch out there, which is fun. They're going to have the kids help with that. And then uh, the commitment to corduroy is coming up. And um, if, if no one's ever been to that, have you been? Oh, the commitment is the, the FFA, um, uh, oh, fundraiser. fundraiser, thank you. Uh, Christy and I went last year. It is a blast. It was commitment, and, and most of the farm folk are out there. Mm -hmm. And it's, this is it's a, it's a dance and an auction and a great dinner and it's warm because it's in summer. It's at the pavilion over at McGee. So that's coming up for that. I believe it's June 2nd. Um, so lots of fun there. Um, always my favorite meeting. Um, I just, they're just doing such great things up there and they care so much about the kids we have. One uh, teenager talked about how he was doing an internship with one of the gentlemen that's on the committee uh, in Wilton. And so he gets to go during school and work and make money. And hopefully it will lead to a job afterwards. And I just thought that was wonderful because I just I think the, the blue collar trades are very um, um, underestimated and they are so important to us. Um, just as important as, as, as the other, you know, the, the professional trades, as you call them, I call them professional, like, you know, the doctor, lawyer, that type of stuff, right? I'm not saying that the blue collar are professional. They are just super important. I just love to see us training our kids in this. And even if they don't do it in the future, if they will use it in the future. So I just I just love that. Um, it was just a great meeting. Um, the other thing is I'm going to the science fair uh, tomorrow during the day with the third graders. And it's more my speed. <laughs> um, so I look forward to that. And then um, finally, I want to thank all the speakers about the book. I did not read to the kids this week, but I did take the time to read part of the book. And I do understand um, a lot of the concerns, and I um, do plan on, um, um, this is not the end, let's just say that. So um, so thank you everybody. We, I heard you, God will work. Thank you. And that's all I have. Okay, next is, I'm sorry, I always have to go back to my notes. So thank you. Mm, no, it's not true. It is Josh. Um, I, I don't really have a lot. Of, it's different from last week. I, I thank you guys for uh, joining us for for dinner tonight. I think that was fun. We had a good time to sit down with CSEA and the, the district and the school board and you know break bread and talk about our kids and relax. So. Um, and then on the on the board packet tonight, there is an agenda item coming up about uh, special education and the fact that we are over numbers in special education. Um, honestly, the solution that we've come up with is not what I'd call a good solution, but the fact of the matter is we are a couple months away from the school year, and there's not really a, there isn't really a good solution. So we, we worked with districts and we talked to all the teachers affected. Um, individually, the members effectively came up with the best we could, either compensating them for their extra work and extra time or offering them time off 
um, to help deal with the, the overwhelming kids that they have in special ed. So, um, so that's before you. And that's it for WIPTA. Uh, I do know that on the board packet is also a uh, presentation from high school about, uh, what are we calling it? It's, um, yeah. Activities. The activities we do. So I, I just got my t-shirt today. So I teach photography and video and we, we are headed down to uh, SoCal to compete in a uh, video competition. So I know it's feeling kind of stunned there a little bit, but um, I'm super excited. Got my t-shirts. The kids are excited. Unfortunately, it sounds like we just got the results back. We didn't, we're not winning anything on the first night. We already submitted some stuff and we didn't win. But anyhow, uh, we're going down there to do some other competitions. So it's going to be super fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So. <laughs> anyway, I'll stop there. I'll, I'll come back to the anyway, that's it. Thank you, Thank you Josh. Uh, uh, he's on vacation. Uh, we don't have anything to report tonight. Thank you. <laughs> All right, superintendent count. Okay. Um, a couple of items. Um, I'm going to first, I, uh, I I think it might have been this week, but maybe it was last week. I presented at the Pasha County Association of Realtors, um, it's, uh, known as PCAR. It's um, uh, an association of all that uh, support home buying or selling, and um, uh, they invite superintendents from around Pasha County to come and speak annually to have an opportunity to plug and market your district, and why would we want to sell homes in Lincoln for um, people with children and what makes your school special. So we'll be able to go and present there. Um, just a reminder to the board that we've got our special meeting on March 20th uh, regarding facilities and then also a follow up on, on board governance. The science uh, fair, our science expo tomorrow. Um, thank you to Whipton CSCA for joining us. Uh, it was a 10 year uh, tradition now that we stopped during COVID, uh, an opportunity to just kind of have dinner together before a board meeting. Um, and then, as President Nitzos indicated before, that because the book is not agendized this evening and we have uh, a legal obligation to notify the public within a certain timeline if there's going to be discussion um, uh, specific to an item, uh, which obviously if this is not an agenda item, we, uh, we need to make sure that we do agendize. But I do want to um, make a couple of just basic comments. Uh, first, with um, thanking Wes and our Lincoln Police Department because the district has an incredible relationship with our police department and we trust and care for and believe in our police. Um, uh, the uh, curriculum is, uh, it does go through a process and I can, um, I, I want to apologize to our community because we could have done a better job and should have done a better job of notifying parents ahead of time related to um, the controversial topics within uh, the text. And we do have a controversial uh, policy uh, in terms of the teaching of controversial issues. I uh, would recommend that, and I imagine the board will probably uh, uh, request <coughs> this, that we review um, our curriculum process. And I think that uh, as, a, as a student mentioned this evening, how our teachers instruct on this is not to have an opinion, right? Like it is not our job to tell kids what to think. It is our job to teach them how to think and to make dis decisions for themselves and to provide a safe environment where students, regardless of their beliefs or regardless of their viewpoints related to one person's depiction of, of, of a topic, to be able to have a dialogue that uh, allows them to safely share their own perspectives, perspectives of their parents perhaps, all the things that are impacting them, and we are to remain neutral. And if we have staff members that are not remaining neutral, that is not in accordance with our board policy, and we need to be made aware of it as an administration so that we can address it. Because the ex expectation is that they are neutral. Um, and so, uh, I, I believe that if our parents had an opportunity to review the activities associated with how this is being taught, um, you would find that it isn't being taught in a way to tell kids how to think or what they should think. We are teaching them. So I, I'm, I'm making a statement. Um, and, and again, I, I think that, I, I, you know, I would encourage the board to ask for uh, for uh, uh, 
the curriculum to be reviewed because it did go through a process. Um, and as uh, Clara stated, there are a lot of books that are controversial. And, um, and they, we have opt-out process, and we can do a better job in terms of the opt-out so that we are not um, creating a situation where students have to be outside of a room to make a choice, um, but ensuring that parents do have a choice to either opt their child in and to choose for themselves as a parent or as a family uh, the book that they are willing for their child to read or to choose an alternative um, option. And, um, and so that, that's what I'll, I'll say um, in that regard. And the last thing I uh, will add, is I think Marjorie, you were gonna maybe mention it, and so um, maybe, uh, is that uh, there is a uh, bill right now to propose an HPV vaccine for uh, enrollment condition of enrollment in schools, and I have a hard time understanding why that should be a condition for enrollment in schools. So um, I would recommend that the board think about part of their role as a governing board is to advocate at the legislative level um, and, uh, and think about what you may want to do in that regard related to advocating perhaps for that bill not to be um, approved. So that is my work. Thank you. Okay, now we will move back to item 5.18, student discipline that was removed from the consent agenda. There will be no discussion on this item, but there will be a roll call vote that will not include student advisory. Ms. Freeman? Yes. Yes. Ms. Profit? Are we voting on this? Yeah, would you state what we're voting on? Yeah, so if you, yeah, so you guys do have to, yeah. Are we voting to make a motion? Or? So, yeah. no, so it was, it was pulled because, um, because uh, Member Dykstra pulled it. Mm -hmm. um, so it would lead one to assume perhaps that it might not have been approved unanimously and the consent agenda does have to be approved unanimously. So um, this item was pulled so that it can be voted on separately. So, so we need to make a motion. Make a motion, yep. make a motion yep. to approve, uh, the, the motion is to approve the, how do I say this, the, the student discipline recommended by the administration. Who would like to make a motion? Which, which is what? Which is for, no, like, for expulsion. Yeah, for, yeah, let's, let's Thank you. That. Yes, no, okay. fair enough. Board expulsion. We've never done this, so yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, yeah. yeah. <laughs> student discipline expulsion, student number 2223-I. Thank, Thank you. Thanks. Yes, yes, yeah. you are welcome. Uh, um, do I have a motion to approve for expulsion? I make a motion to approve the expulsion. Do you? Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Roll call. Ms. Crockett. Yes. Mr. Price. Yes. Freeman? Yes. Mr. Dykstra? No. Ms. Nixos? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And I want to thank you, Mr. Dykstra. I think that was a very good example about how we can have different opinions and we can pull these things out into the public um, in, in, a, in a very productive way to know that we have been all thoughtful about these decisions. Thank you. Yes. Appreciate it. Okay. So, 7.1. Members of the public wishing to comment on any item should complete a yellow request to address Board of Trustees from locate, uh, form located on the table at the entrance to the boardroom. Request forms are being submitted to the board clerk before each item is discussed. Speakers are limited to three minutes each, and the board will limit the total time for public input on each item to 20 minutes. So 7.2, student activity opportunities of the of the Okay, so I know that um, uh, given that the board is, is fairly new um, and 
two years ish or or less. And then um, uh, Member Dykstra had inquired about student activities, and I know it has a very strong interest in, in student competition in particular. We thought it might be good for our two comprehensive high schools to share some information about the student activities that are uh, available for students to access at our comprehensive high schools. And this is not um, comprehensive in that it's not going to talk about what is available for TK through 8th grade, but it is uh, it is addressing at the comprehensive schools where the vast majority of our, our high school students serve and uh, would encourage Shelby to potentially even chime in and say, yes, we do that at Phoenix too, or if there's some things that are different at Phoenix, to kind of share that uh, as well. And so if the board has an interest in the future to hear about activities that are being done at our middle schools or, or elementaries as well, we're happy to do that, but we thought it would be a good start for the board to hear about what's happening for our students at the high school, comprehensive high schools. Well, as we like to say, it's a great day to be a zebra, and we say Continue the charge. There we go. Yep. <laughs> so um, we've met most of you, but my name is Jen Collette, and I'm the class principal at Lincoln High School, and I have a colleague. Hi, Heather Pierce, principal at 12 Bridges High School. And um, I've got to say that I actually came today from um, from River City High School. I'm part of a WASP visiting committee there, and they're doing some amazing things at River City, but I'm also reminded about all the incredible things that are happening here in Western Placer at the high school level. So it's really exciting to share this information with you. Um, for the guests, we didn't make copies of this, but if you want it, just email one of us and we're happy to send it to you if you'd like um, the information. So, um, but there should be copies coming around the board. Um, so what we're going to do today is talk just a little bit about some things that we're really proud of um, that are happening at both of our schools. And then we're going to focus particularly on amazing things that are happening in the arts, in act um, academics, in athletics, and activities. Um, we're going to talk about specifically some highlights of things we're really proud of and give you kind of an idea of different ways that kids are engaged and are competing because I know that's a particular interest of, you, of yours and um, we're happy to answer any questions you may have or invite you to come see these things in action um, in the next couple of days, weeks, and years. Yeah. Okay, great. I'm up. Yeah. All right. So starting off with 12 Bridges High School, we, as you know, are a young high school in our infancy. Um, but making our own way and name here in Lincoln, um, working together often with Lincoln High School, um, and really building that partnership school. Some of the things about our site is that we currently have nearly 1,000 students. We had about 600 last year, 1,000 this year. We're looking at close to 1,400 next year. So we're growing quicker um, than we can keep up with, but that's okay. Everybody wants to be a rhino, and I don't blame them. Um, we have a huge focus on culture at our campsite, or our campus. Campus and site. Campus and site. Everything is a new adventure. Two words all together. Campus and site, or campsite, if you like camping as a campsite. Focus on culture, and um, we are doing some new things next year. But I'm going to take that away in the next couple slides. All right, our focus on the arts. Um, we offer quite a large amount of art classes that students can choose from. We've got band, we've got choir, we have drama, ceramics, art, uh, photography, piano, um, all kinds of different art pathways. <coughs> One of the things that we're looking forward to is adding our first marching band in the 23-24 school year. So we look forward to that. Um, that takes a little while to grow those bigger programs. So we might start with, start with the smaller march, marching band, but give us a couple years, we'll have a big band going. Um, some recent successes that we've had, photography shows. Yes, yes. Um, we got a grant to purchase some 3D printers in the art classrooms to allow students to do something called choice art, where they really get the opportunity to pick how they express their artwork. Um, we had the production of Julie Caesar and Bye Bye Birdie in combination with LHS last year. And we are doing our first spring production um, at, on our site alone-ish um, of Mama Mia. We're getting a little now. Ish. Some really good opportunities for competition, which I know was a question of Mr. Dykstra, so I want to make sure I address those. In our academics, there's a lot of opportunities for competition. Um, a lot of these exist within our CTSOs uh, or our career technical um, student organizations. 
Um, some of those include Cyber Patriot, which is through our computer science pathway. We have an art club. We have HOSA, which is through our biomedical pathway. Uh, we have the Crash News broadcast um, participating in the Student Television Network. And we've also participated in some speech competitions and AVID. These are all really great ways for our students to participate in the like uh, um, uh, academics of the school, but also do some competitions. Some of the competition successes or things that we've done that has um, been increasing or been successful for us was that last year we had one student participate in speech competition. This year we have nine. So that's growth. We love that. Um, the participation in Cyber Patriot, we are slowly making rank and closing the numbers. There's like 100 teams or something that participated at first and you know you can rank 99 or you can rank number one. We're getting closer to 50. So we're getting there, we're getting there, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're a young team. Um, we do something called Tiger Talk with our broadcasting classes where we go to 12 Bridges Elementary. They are the Tigers. So we do a little uh, broadcasting with them, which is a really fun way to connect our students. And the students in the broadcasting pathway will be competing in the first county film festival. So we're pretty excited about that. Athletically, we were very lucky to open right out the gate with more than a dozen athletic programs. That was just amazing. A lot of schools, when they first open, they take time adding a sports program here and there, or maybe like three the first year, five and so on, and we really offered the full gamut the very first year. Um, this year, we have every team participating at the varsity level. Our first year, some of our teams were Students compete alone, um, such as in track, in field, or cross country. Some of our students participated at the varsity level and competed at that level, but now we have sports all competing at the varsity level. Um, some of the awesome successes that we've had is that our boys varsity basketball team, their overall GPA was 3.6. I, I just like that, I love that so much. Multiple inaugural championships in our opening year. Our first team to win a PDL championship was Girls Golf. Girls Golf won. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. And um, one of the things we've been doing is honoring our scholar athletes. We honor our scholar athletes with a, with a hoodie. If they're on a varsity team and they earn a 3.5 or higher, they get a really, really nice like Nike hoodie with the TV on it, and it's working because we're giving them out at lunchtime in front of the school when they're all out and about. So they're asking, wait, wait, my GPA was such and such, Mrs. Pierce, how do I get a hoodie? 3.5, kiddo, you can do it next time. And so it's working. It's challenging the kids to do their very best. So we find that very successful too. Some activities that we have available. Um, there's a large list of our different clubs available that you can take a look at there. We offer so such a huge variety so that students essentially can find something that fits for them. Um, there's the Chess Club, Creative Writing Club, Interact Club, National Honor Society, the Finance Club, the Key Club, uh, HOSA, which is the Biomedical Pathways uh, club, uh, yearbook, there's student leadership. Many of these clubs offer some competition um, opportunities. Not all do, but many do. Some other ways that our school have had successes in activities. Uh, we have the number one student section in the Sacramento area. What a student section is, if you're like, what? wait, Miss Pierce, what's that? It's kind of where all the kids sit at the games and share with the crowd. So our crash pit, that's our student section, is number one in the Sacramento area, and we're pretty proud of that. So that's really awesome. Um, we had multiple boys and girls state delegates this year, which is very <laughs> exciting. Um, we did something at our school during homecoming where we did hallway decoration, and it ended up turning out to be a ton of fun. Um, each class got a hallway, in our student center and they decorated it um, with the theme that fit, which was movies of the 80s. It was a blast. It was really good. 
And um, and the competition there was just, I couldn't believe what the kids could put together. It was amazing. I actually called Miss Callahan. I'm like, you should come see this. She was out of town, but it was really awesome. So doing lots of activities as well um, over at TDH. And um, we aren't a 120-year-old school. We've got one of those, though, that we're best friends with. So I'm going to let them take it away. <laughs> Um, being at Lincoln High School is a collaborative relationship that we've been able to maintain with Twelve Bridges High School. Sometimes things are really tense and there's a lot going on, um, but both uh, Ms. Pierce and I, as well as Mr. Mall before, have really worked to uh, try to lead um, with integrity in those spaces, and I, I'm really proud of that relationship that we've built and we've maintained. So Lincoln High School, there's a lot of amazing things happening there. Um, these are just some of the ways that we're kind of earning our stripes, if you will, um, in the community. And I want to focus today a bit on our 11 CTE pathways and student organizations related to those. Um, in 2021, we were honored, and Mike Mall actually helped facilitate this, the California Exemplary Arts Award. Um, we were the only school in Placer County to receive that award, which is a really incredible honor for us. Um, student athletics is another space where there's a lot of involvement and competition and pride. Um, we have an incredible cadet corps program. Can I say it? Go ahead. Okay. Her husband teaches it, so it's pretty fabulous. So, um, there's some awesome things happening in cadet corps, which we'll share. Um, and then certainly um, a focus on student achievement across the board. So some things we're really proud of. Um, and I'd like to talk first a little bit about the arts. So um, because we are a very established school, we have a ton of opportunities for students to participate in arts activities. This is not, um, this middle column is not an exclusive list. It was just what I could fit while the font was still readable. And so trying to gather a variety of options that represented both the physical arts, the performing arts, and the, um, and the, um, the visual arts. And so, and Ari can speak to that if you ever have questions. She's highly involved in all of our arts programs and I'm really proud of what they're achieving. So a couple things I'd like to highlight for you. Our floral design class, not only do they have kids interning in local floral businesses in Lincoln, earning their certifications, but they also have the opportunity to do all the flowers for a wedding at Catavadera, which I think is like pretty cool, right? I mean, Catavadera, it's like that was, right? Yeah, that's cool. Fun fact, they did the Pierce wedding too. Oh, I didn't know that. How about that? I know. <laughs> okay, cool. But and the Pierce wedding, that's another fun part. Um, we, um, we coordinate the clay day that happens in the city of Lincoln. And so our, um, our ceramics teacher is heavily involved in that, and we're proud of her and her students for their efforts there. Um, we're producing um, plays all the time, including Julius Caesar, um, Bye Bye Birdie, and as Ari mentioned, All in the Timing, which is a, a series of six acts that are all student-directed, and um, that's an incredible point of pride. Mr. Florence is there to facilitate, um, but really it's student-driven and student-directed, and that's a, a wonderful point of pride. And I've got to share, like just about two weeks ago, um, I had the privilege of going to the Crest Theater in Sacramento, and our marching band had the privilege of playing with a band called the Black Jacket Symphony, um, which is kind of a cover-ish type band, and they were covering the Fleetwood Mac album Rumors, and so our band was brought out at the end to play the song Tusk, and it was incredible. Like, it was the coolest thing ever. And so our kids are out there, they're visible, um, and they're doing what they love, and they do it with great pride, and we're really proud of them. So those are a few things happening in here. Um, in the space of co-curricular academics, so as Heather mentioned, you know, our kids are very involved in things in the classroom, but there's a wonderful opportunity for students to take what they do in the classroom and extend it beyond. So again, there's a whole list of different um, CTE programs and co-curricular initiatives as well as a variety of non-CTE activities that kids can be involved in. Um, many of them are similar between um, Twelve Bridges and Lincoln, uh, but there's some unique ones too, in particular the Science Expo, which many of you mentioned is happening tomorrow. They, I, on my way over here, stop by, and they're all set up and ready to welcome all the third graders. It's really exciting. Um, we have our Cyber, pa Cyber Patriot Contest, which our kids continue to do well in. And we're launching an eSports program, which is really cool. I was a little skeptical at first. I'm like, really, we're video gaming? Like, that's what we're doing in high school? But it really brings in a different population of students who might not otherwise have the opportunity to engage in school. And we had our first kind of contest, and we took first place. Like, that's so cool. FFA organization, um, as many of you know, you've been to the farm, they're incredible. They're out literally every weekend from January until about April, competing and taking top places and speaking competitions, Harley Pro competitions, veterinary science, farm records, and creed contests. So these are kids that are up there speaking and, and actively um, doing their best stuff in front of judging adults who judge with um, red line highlighters. Like it's crazy, it's very intense, I've done it. I can't imagine being on the other side of that. So, 
really proud of our FFA students. Um, in addition, and I know that uh, Mr. Price has been involved in this, our engineering program has a really incredible year-long program they call Shark Tank, where our students are coming up with project ideas um, from conception to completion, and even potentially selling them, um, which is really exciting. And if you want to check out the engineering, I would, I would invite you to come see what Mr. Seacrest has got going on. You mentioned, um, April, that you're going to the, um, the FFA um, Corduroy event. Um, the name of it is not. Yep. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Corduroy. Yeah. yeah. So our, our, um, our wood shop class actually builds the chicken coops that they use as part of their raffle and their auction um, as a part of that function. So that's another cool way that our kids are doing things that are out in the community and benefiting the community. Um, and then lastly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to highlight Mr. Pierce and his, um, I point to her, his the other half, um, with his Cadet Corps program. Our kids are um, traveling to San Luis Obispo and other locations in California and participating in drill contests and marksmanship contests, and they consistently come back in the top one and two place. Our kids are incredible, and we're really proud of their achievement with Cadet Corps and the opportunity that provides for them to consider a role in the military or at least um, have a better understanding of, of military and military-like things um, in our community. I would like to talk with you a little bit about athletics, and um, much like this Pierce, we've got tons of things happening every night. There's something going on. But a couple of highlights I'd like to share is that um, Lincoln High School's cross-country team have the number one GPA in the entire softball community section, which is a huge accomplishment. We've had banner seasons this year, and we know that, that, is, um, that we will continue to fight hard. We know that we have the benefit of having all the seniors in Lincoln at our school, and that's part of the reason why our athletics have been so strong. So our athletics achievement for our varsity sports is not just a Lincoln achievement, but a community of Lincoln achievement. This is all of our kids that are, that are participating at that level. Um, and then I, I just have to do this. Um, we just use a hashtag that's once a zebra, always a zebra. So I've got to share with you a couple of awesome things that have happened for alumni of Lincoln High School. Um, the NCAA Volleyball Freshman Player of the Year is a 2022 Lincoln High School graduate. Her name's Mimi Collier. She's incredible. She's at the University of Oregon. She's a rock star. Um, we had a, um, an athlete who signed um, to be a kicker for the Raiders this year, a former Lincoln High School athlete, which is really exciting and very wonderful. Um, we also have um, students that are prof professionally competing in international soccer as we speak. In addition to that, last year we had 14 students, at least 14, who signed letters of intent to play collegiate athletics as they left Lincoln High School. So that's a really great point of pride. And I think athletics is lots of things, but one thing it is is it's a way for kids to learn how to build community, build teamwork, and build perseverance and skills and work hard and something that may not always be easy for them. So we're really proud of our athletics accomplishments. We're almost done, but there's just so much. Um, when you think about just general um, activities, that's obviously a point of pride for both of our high schools. And we have tons of different clubs and activities, as you can see up here. Um, a couple of things I'd like to highlight for you are our Alasta organization um, is working um, with GEMS as, as well as with Creekside Oaks with their um, immersion program to bring um, the Latin American culture into those spaces to support students and celebrate um, the, the food, the music, and the culture and history of, of the Latin American community. So we're really proud of that. Um, we also had multiple students that competed for positions in Boys and Girls State, and that was really exciting to see how much interest there was from our 11th graders. Um, we also are opening up a new um, CTE program this uh, coming fall that's uh, focused on education. And education has been an important um, piece for us at Lincoln um, with our receiver crew and just getting kids that are well trained to go out and do work with our students and with, the, with younger students in our district. So we're really excited about launching that CTE program as a way to further um, develop our student leaders to help them go out and do really amazing things in our community. And then um, Mr. Toy, he's awesome. He's, uh, he's kind of a jack of all trades and teaches lots of things. One thing he's very passionate about is cooking. And so he got a grant and got a little food cart and he um, takes his food cart on the road and he bakes pizza with fresh grown products at the elementary schools. And I think that's really cool. And the kids go with him and they make it happen and it's awesome. So there are lots of things happening at Lincoln. Those are just a handful of things that we're really proud of. And um, we hope that if you ever have any interest in seeing any of the things our kids are doing, just say the word and we're happy to open up our doors to you. Um, I don't know if there's any questions or if we can even do questions, but we're happy to take them. Yeah. Yep. Any questions? From yeah, go ahead. I'm going to go. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you know. I'll put you in touch with Mr. Twyke. Perfect. Yes. And that is from the farm. Those are from, uh, is it from produce raised by the farm? Some of it is. Some of it is stuff that they buy, like, like grocery stores. Stuff, stuff, like, like they use things that come from the farm whenever they yeah. yeah. Like this time of year, not so great, but other times of the year, they do. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I'd just like to uh, thank Carrie because I've been bugging her about this. And I know this was not easy to organize and put together. And you probably surprised each other that all the things you had. I, I would assume that was the case. 
And I would hope when people go to the Kiwanis and they go to the chamber and so forth, they'll have something like this to, to show the community of all the great things we're doing. I still like to see a lot of competition. Yes. And we want to see that. And I see we already have a lot of that. Okay. But sometimes you don't know if people are listening to you. And now I, I, I think they are. So <laughs> you guys stayed late for the day. And it was so good of you to do this. And it's exciting to be a small part of it. Thank you so of much. Of course, it's our pleasure, absolutely. We're, we're so proud of our kids for all the opportunities that they have to be involved. We're so proud of our teachers for making those opportunities available. These things all happen because of teachers that are sitting in this mm -hmm. room that are making it happen for our kids. And um, the competition piece is a lot because that means that they're doing extra above and beyond even still evenings, weekends, and whatever. Um, on our four-day weekend, for example, Ms. Fipinga took a group of kids up to mock trial and gave up two entire days of her four-day weekend to help facilitate mock trial for our kids. Like, but, it's um, awesome. It does a lot of things. It, it, it highlights the district, which yes. we need to do. And I think it, uh, if you're applying to a college and you have a, some sort of a competition that you did well in, that, that can't do anything except to uh, help I agree with you. Uh, One thing, uh, go ahead. Okay, one thing our counselors do is they go and talk with the students um, every year and, and encourage them to create what we call brag sheets. Uh -huh. um, our, our seniors can talk a little bit about those. And so they encourage the kids to think about what are all the things you're doing and all the ways you're contributing and writing those down. And when we have the opportunity to write letters of recommendation, I'm often humbled by the volume of things that our students are choosing to engage in and the ways that they're making differences in our community, um, even when they're not shouting it from the rooftops. Like, it's incredible what our students are achieving. I have a grandson, and you mentioned eSports, which yeah. is a little foreign to me, but I went yes, online yeah. and looked it up, and it, it's actually huge. It's, 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 mm -hmm. re it's going to be one of the biggest uh, events in the world, actually. It's a CIF it's sport. Like, it's a sanctioned sport by the CIF, yeah. which is kind of crazy. Well, when I mentioned to him, he, 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 he'd see all this other stuff, he wouldn't pay attention, but eSports made a lot to it. Right. I think so. that's such a great point, and something that we're proud of is making sure that there's opportunities for any child, whatever it is they're interested in, to find a path or a place or their people, right? Important. And so providing a wide variety of options for students is really important um, so kids can find, find their peers, find themselves. I would hope on a regular basis, once a year, once or twice a year, now that you have this organized and it's going to be a little easier, you could present it to the public and present sure. it to the board and just remind us of all the fun things you're doing. Absolutely. And one of the things I know both of our sites do is we also do kind of club rush style days where we have all our clubs and our club leaders out in a quad area or a center of campus. And um, we often have students manning those booths, talking to other students, the younger students or just other students about, hey, this is what I experienced in this club and this is how I found my place in this club or maybe this is how that competition went for me when I was competing with this club. So lots of different ways to make sure we aren't just sharing this information with you or with the public, but the kids know it and yeah. what's going on on our own sites. Well, I'll stay in touch because I'd like to sit in and see that. We're happy to action. celebrate. We share all the great things happening in um, Western Closter. Thank you Anytime. So one, one question is, um, is, is there a vehicle in which a member of the public, a business owner, or somebody who just wants to have something created flower arrangements and whatnot. How can those services be sourced through the district um, and have students participate in completing that? Typically when people, um, this happens on a regular, I would say at least once a week I get something from a community member that's asking like, can you do flowers or can we make a donation or can we come visit such and such? And so I, I don't want to speak for Heather, but I'm betting we do it the same way. Um, typically what we'll do is respond and say that would be amazing and we include the teacher who's kind of the lead person and encourage them to, um, to engage in that opportunity whenever possible. Sometimes it's hard. For example, flowers can be hard, right? Like if, they're, if they've got a ton on their plate, they might not be able to make it happen. But if they have enough notice, they usually really like to, to engage the community whenever possible. Whenever possible. So things like media production, photography. Mm -hmm. I would assume those are services that a student could get credit for and somebody could actually put to use. Mm -hmm. So um, I say this because I'm encouraging people in the community, and business owners and business Let leaders, if you need a letterhead, Absolutely. if you need a logo, yeah. if you need a website, we I'm sure we have kids yeah. that can do it, they get credit for it, yeah. and then you can write them an actual letter of recommendation that they can yeah. use for a career, for a, a college. I mean, it's, yeah, I've seen it in action, it's phenomenal. I think that's something that um, part of our job, our role, like as principals of comprehensive high schools, is really to try to engage with the community whenever we can so we can help forge those connections and help people realize the awesome things that we can offer and what our kids are capable of doing. Um, Anytime you can, we will. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks.
Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, it's not a question. I, I just want to thank both of you and your staff because I know your days don't end at 3 o'clock. Um, and you hear your weekends. What? I thought it was 2.30. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> uh, or, the bell. Yeah, yeah. So I just want to thank you because I know uh, you spend much more time with uh, your <coughs> school family than you do with your own. So I just want to let everybody know that, you know, we appreciate you and all your staff for, for being there for our kids. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did well that we covered the most important things. Yeah, right. Do you want to add anything else? Um. Okay. Next next meeting we'll see. Okay, that'll be great. So uh, anything? Okay. So all to say. Thank you. It's wonderful to hear this stuff. I love when hearing accomplishments. Um, and Carrie and I have talked, to, and, and Audrey and I have talked about writing more. Mm -hmm. um, because you know you don't know what you don't know, and now we know. But does everybody else know? Right. So I'd love to love to see that. Um, and the last thing is, um, Heather, how do you win the best crash pit? <laughs> like, what are, what's the criteria and what's the reward? <laughs> so I, the criteria is a secret, and if I told you, <laughs> then you might try and take the award. Okay. But it's all about <laughs> it's all about a ton ton of kid student participation. It's about having a theme, a dress up, doing something different. Everybody has the same cheers. You better come up with a new one, okay. right? And going out with a bang, whatever that looks like. Okay. One time it was colored powder. I think it was flower. Was it flower, Clara? No, it's just like chalk. Yeah, like chalk and colored chalk. Yeah. And let me tell you, I caught some fantastic pictures. When it went up, it was pretty good. What are the other, what are the rules that we're allowed to share? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> little competition through social media and so students vote for it online. Awesome. <laughs> one, thing I would, one thing I would offer to you, you asked about or mentioned about like how do we let the community know. Yes. So mm -hmm. one thing I would encourage you if you have the opportunity is to have the community members follow us on social media. Mm -hmm. um, I know that, that Heather's getting her feet underneath her, um, but I make, it, I make a conscious effort to post something every single day that's happening at Lincoln High School. I've done it every year since I've been an administrator in our district and it's incredible what you see when you're looking. And so if you want to know what's happening at Lincoln High School, pop on, I'll, I'll sometimes post five, six times a day, like there's nothing too small to celebrate. So if you want to know what's happening at Lincoln High School, um, check us out on, on Facebook or the Gram. I've seen the crash pit, it's absolutely wonderful, and it's the only reason I want to be 15 again. It looks like <laughs> 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 Thank you guys so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Um, under her, we have a transition support provider position. Uh, we work with the CSEA union to update that job description. We change the title just a little bit. Um, and our goal is to eventually add a second position. We currently have one um, that are serving those students. So just as a matter of uh, the process, the board has to approve um, anytime we update and revise a job description. We work with CSEA on it. Um, it will be going to their ratification vote, I think, for their meeting tomorrow. So yeah. it's pending ratification by them. Um, it did already go back and forth to the field office. Um, along with this, we are proposing an increase in the range for this position from range 18 to range 22, uh, which will be on the subsequent item when we bring the salary schedule on the next item. But uh, that's the gist of it. We're increasing the hours from six and a half hours a day to eight and increasing the work year from 200 days to 205, along with the job description. But this, this item specifically is just approving the updated and revised job description for the transition provider position. I don't know if there's any questions. Any questions? No? Okay. Do we have a motion? A motion. A second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All, aye. aye. All opposed? Okay. Thank you. You're still on. As 7.4, consider approval revised 2022 2023 classified salary schedule. Okay, so based on that <coughs> job description approval, um, we're also, um, we have for your approval uh, a revision of the classified salary schedule. The only change here is changing that position to transition. Provide a position from range 18 to range 22. Other than that, the rest of the salary schedule remains as is. Um, and our recommendation would be for the board to approve the updated salary schedule. <coughs> Any questions for Cliff? Um, what we don't typically have is a half-day long-term sub. Um, most of our positions are full-time, so we don't really need a half-day rate. So we never established one. Um, we do have a situation right now where we have, um, we had a teacher that was working at, at a half-time position at Atlas um, doing some of the, um, the elementary student, um, you know, teaching and grading and everything. It was just a half-time position. Um, the person in that position is now out on medical leave. So we, were, we, we needed to bring in a sub for the rest of the year. So we now have a, a, a sub who's only working half day, and we're trying to figure out, okay, how do we pay this person, and realize we need to establish an actual rate. So the only change on the substitute salary schedule that you'll see here is the addition of a half day long term rate. Um, what we normally do is take our full day rate, and we take 60% of that, and that's our half day rate. So our long term, Rate is 200, 60% of that is 120, so that's what we're proposing. Um, nothing changes as far as um, if someone was in um, doc status, as far as the person who's being subbed for. Uh, none of those amounts are changing. We're literally just adding this half day long term rate. So, our um, recommendations for you to approve the revised schedule with the, this new rate added. Any questions? some cases we have what, what are called class overages or caps. So 
contractually we um, we have a maximum we try to stay under, but sometimes we have leeway to go above that. Um, when we do go above that, we typically compensate the certificated member in some way. Um, we have different formulas in the contract for different situations, um, but we have never had the need to have one for um, our RSP, our resource program, special ed teachers. Uh, legally, they can have a caseload of up to 28 students. Um, if a waiver is filed with the state, that can be increased up to 31, but that's legally the max. Um, we had four or five situations where we had teachers who were at 28, um, and we had students being assessed for special ed and or moving into the district, which was gonna put us over in a few situations. So we approached the uh, union, we approached WIPDA and basically said, here's the situation, here's our problem. Um, there's not enough of a need to fully hire an additional teacher. So um, we do have this um, caveat in our contract to be able to go above the caseload maximum. We've just never done it, and we've never um, negotiated or agreed upon any compensation. So uh, we went back and forth on, on some different examples. Obviously, we want to support the teachers um, who may be in this situation. So first, we've agreed, you know, obviously it has to be a willing unit member who wants to do this. Um, and two, we came up with uh, one, a compensation rate, or two, uh, release time. So mainly this would require an elementary teacher to have an additional IEP, do additional caseload management. They wouldn't necessarily have the student in their class. Um, so the compensation rate we kind of went back and forth on, uh, we settled on the elementary class size overage rate, which already is in contract and is already on our form. Um, so for now it is a bit of a Band-Aid that's why we put together this MOU. Um, if this is something that we might encounter in the future, um, this is something we would, at some point, probably put in the contract and actually come up with uh, something that we all agree on. It's not just a Band-Aid, so. Um, so this doesn't mean it's, just, it's a total done deal. We still have to file a waiver with the state if a student, um, if a teacher has a caseload over 28 for more than 15 days, we have to apply to the state to the CDE to get a waiver and they have to approve it. So this just gives us a little bit of flexibility in some of our tight uh, RSP situations in elementary school. So our recommendation would be that you approve our band-aid MOU for the rest of the school year. Thank you. Any questions? You say band-aid. Sorry, you guys working on a resolution or a way to solve it? more students next year. We, we currently are not. Uh, not, but we are not, so. Um, so for the teachers that have these high caseloads, well, we're going to we're we're be a stress staff it based on what our projected caseloads are for next year. We're going to make sure that we're we have enough staff. Kids. Okay. All right. So <coughs> yes. Yes. Well, I mean, that's just our staffing ratio. But yes. But as far as like putting some words into the contract and okay. that's some why that is it of how are we working to solve this problem? To not have this become an ongoing thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's all my questions. conversations that have been had uh, already about the uh, establishment of the youth development leadership team, uh, which is a uh, district, basically a district and city's joint committee as it relates to the development of that, uh, of the youth development leadership team, and uh, the request to have board uh, members serve as representatives. So um, uh, Member Profit and uh, Member Price have uh, indicated an interest in participating. And so asking for the board to officially uh, indicate them as official board representatives to this new committee that was created after our December, uh, I think it was December 20th. You probably remember the dates because it was better than I do in terms of when you officially were sworn in, but I think it was December 20th. Um, <clears throat> and then we also are um, putting together and finalizing the team for the dyslexia committee <coughs> and also uh, are requesting board representatives on this district committee and member Profit and member Dykstra have indicated an interest and so looking for the board to take action to 
officially make them board representatives. And then additionally, there's been some conversation and I think this is gonna come up in the next item um, around policy um, process. So we currently have um, member profit is on the board policies district committee, but it's not a committee that ever meets. It's just kind of this process and it's funky and um, and she is the representative and in having some conversations with, with her as well as consulting kind of with legal and some other uh, districts about best practices for doing board um, policy, whether it's uh, adopting new policies or updating existing policies, there um, this practice that we have currently is not really a best practice and so we'll discuss this in 7.8 but um, ultimately uh, we're requesting that we eliminate board policies as it relates to board representatives on a maybe district committee which again doesn't really exist it's just we have a board rep who gets the policies ahead of other people and I think there's going to be a question about actually establishing a policies committee in <coughs> conjunction with the information I shared about being better about bringing policies initially to the board for a first re read and opportunity to have initial discussions and thoughts and then you don't actually take action until you've had time to chew on it more and this could happen that, um, after perhaps there's committee representatives from the board that actually meet with staff when the new policies are or updates to existing policies are uh, come out to kind of review go through a process, then it comes to the board for initial read discussion, and then comes to the board again for uh, uh, discussion and action, and that's, that's consistent with best practices. So the recommendation is to accept member profit and uh, member price on the youth development leadership team, and accept member profit and member extra on the dyslexia committee, and then remove uh, member profit for uh, board policies as it relates to board reps and <coughs> when it's going to be discussed and established differently for the board uh, moving forward. And that's it. Okay. Any questions? Are you all right with this? Yes, because I'm going to ask for a board policy okay. committee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's fine. Yes. Yeah, great. All right. Um, is there a motion? To approve? Uh, exactly what she said. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Okay.
an action for you guys to actually officially take action to establish the committees based on discussion in uh, in alignment with the board by law. So okay. the board by law was attached, so you kind of have a sense of if you're going to establish a committee. So there's there are standing committees, there's ad hoc committees, um, and uh, and that's all outlined in the, the board by bylaws. And then there's expectations around establishing the purpose of the committee, how how the committee operates um, in conjunction with the board, um, what authority, those types okay. of things. Do you want to expand? Yes, I'd like to expand. I'd like to have a committee with two board members. I was hoping to stay on it, Mr. Price as well. Um, meet quarterly, just like the um, policies come out with the policy team from the district and possible legal rep mm -hmm. to make sure that the things that we're adopting or not wanting to adopt are legal, that we do it about two to three weeks after the policies drop so we have time to review. Then we sit down for two hours as a committee and go through it, hash it out, and uh, bring it to the board to review and then back again to vote on. Pretty, like most districts do. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any ideas? So, are we all going to get to see them before you vote? Yes. Yeah, so, and, and part of, at the end of the day, board policies are, are established by the majority of the board, right? It doesn't have to be unanimous, but the majority of the board has to take action on whatever the language is. So, this committee would not have the authority to establish and say this will be it right it still does have to come to the board but it provides an opportunity uh, to and, and, and marjorie and i uh, had a conversation uh, about this because in the friday update i had shared you know kind of best practices hey let's bring it for an initial read and initial discussion based on just hey you've had 72 hours to kind of review this initially what are your initial thoughts as a board and have that conversation give maybe a little bit of guidance and direction and then <coughs> no less than two weeks later, right, you're coming back to then have further discussion after you've had some time to consider it, review it, do your homework, those types of things, and then you're discussing it further, acting if you want, or saying, hey, we want to discuss it even more, bring it to another meeting. The policy committee aspect, um, and I, I support Marjorie's recommendation for this, is it gives an opportunity for at least two of you to have a little more background so that when it does come to the board, it's not just the staff having more background related to language that's coming out for why you know certain things are being recommended for language or all the things, and they're, they just get to be part of the discussion, right? And then that, that allows for some of that background just for the board itself, because at the end of the day, it is your job to set policy. It's our job to adhere to them. And so we, it, you know, the more you you've got members of your board that are in the know and can speak to it, um, you know, as to why you support the recommendations or why you think that we should you should the board should take action to do something different than what's recommended um, from staff or whatever. It, it gives you it just gives you more info and background. So I, I do support it. I don't think it's a bad idea by any means, and, and I think that. Um, there are districts that do that. And so the reason she was saying quarterly is CSBA comes out quarterly with updates <coughs> or, um, or new policies in accordance with as legislative things drop and, and new laws take effect. And so they, um, they push that out quarterly. And so it would be a matter of giving everybody in the committee, okay, here's all of the ones that have just dropped a month from now, right? Because it's gonna be a big, Stack of, if it's quarterly. A month from now, we're going to meet, we're going to discuss, and then Maria and I would still work to not bring them all to you at once, right? Because it, we would we would still bring them maybe 10 at a time type of thing, so the board is not also receiving and only having kind of two weeks to read some, some information, but the members of the committee and then obviously staff would have a month or so to prep and review and all the things and then meet together and hopefully have a quick you know, uh, meeting, or it, sometimes it might be lengthy, but the expectation is you come prepared, which means you have to have read and be prepared to discuss what the recommended changes are, so. Would it be possible for um, when Jason and Marjorie, when you guys go through um, the policy, if they're just kind of a slam dunk, can we know that, look, they've been reviewed by both 
uh, Marjorie and Jason, these are slam dunk, you can read them, but have them separated into deeper, what what they would, either one of them would recommend a, deep, a deeper dive, because when we're getting 10 policies, it's going to be 1,600 pages, and that was like what yeah, my that is really was, hard. was to read it all by myself. Yeah, yeah this says yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> that's that's really very yeah. difficult. And we could yeah. do something like that. I think we could do like could based on the committee years. conversations. We could probably in the in the the fact sheet that supports you know that goes with the policies that come forward. We could indicate these were. 100% in agreement and no real discussion occurred because everybody on the committee agreed and then these are some ones that questions. that you know we made some tweaks or whatever that we want to draw the attention yeah. toward and then that would allow for further discussion amongst all the I mean at the end it's of the day different files. it is yeah. it is the authority of the majority of the board and so I, I yes I think that that's reasonable but I would also say that as a member of the board right like when you're voting on something, you want to make sure that you're, you, you know, read it, yeah, totally. No, but no, but I get it. It's like the ones that you want to pay closer attention to versus the ones that you you More are trusting your to. two board yeah. colleagues and staff and the uh, legal team um, that has reviewed and ultimately made those recommendations in accordance with the requirements of the state that. Um, that allow you to be a little bit more comfortable and maybe skim versus read intensely. Yeah. Yeah. I would only say that if the two of us discuss policy, then we're, don't smile. Like, you're so <laughs> excited about reading all these things. Um, if we, not, if we, <laughs> no, I just got off this committee. <laughs> um, uh, then we will have burned our one conversation. So that means but that the remainder of the board would have to wait until the policy comes to them as it has in the past. Yes, because okay. I just want to be clear, yeah. the Brown Act would allow us to then and make any reach outs and say, hey, I want to know, what do you think of this? this is you know, but I think when we sit down with the district people and us mm -hmm. together, I mean, I think we can come up with a, a Oh, I don't disagree. I just want to, yeah. that's, that, that's about the only issue well, that I can say, like, if we put it into like a little, Report of what we as a committee sure. have come to that would have done. Right. When you said what you yeah. have to burn. Our, for that that, that, that is actually that that is a good because or your weekly update. Right, because as board <coughs> members of, of committees, whether it's a board and this would be our first official official board committee, right? Like if oh, we'll at the board. Purview Don't worry. Board. We'll definitely is, <laughs> is that you you do give reports and so you can't talk outside of the public setting, but if you review, let's say October is one of the quarterly meetings and there's a policy that may not come until February based on when we're bringing the 10 at a time forward, but at, when you meet in February, or when we meet in October and then we have an next board meeting, you guys would then publicly to the rest of, so that way it's not a violation of Brown Act because you're not discussing it outside of the public meeting other than you guys doing it in the meeting which you can do, but that's your burn, yeah, right? And, and right. so then it becomes, you could publicly say, hey, we, we just looked at it, we had a real lengthy discussion about this particular policy, and you know we think that this is gonna be a discussion that probably needs to be had more intensely with the five of us at some point when it comes for the two reads and possibly, you know, an action. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's a good point. There. And then who, whom else would serve? on this thing we would cabinet have and me okay and then we would bring in <laughs> members of personnel other members of personnel or business or ed services as it relates to things that they oversee so for example scott is ed services which includes special education right but as we're looking mm -hmm. at policies specific to special education if those are components it will probably be scott and the rest of cabinet and our director of special education right would be in at that time, but if there are members of um, of cabinet, even like let's say there are zero policies related to personnel mm -hmm. in this quarterly dump, sure, I probably would say, hey, Cliff, uh, and personnel, you don't one, yeah. need to. But there are sometimes policies and ed services that have implications on personnel, right? Because if there's complaints or concerns related to our instructional program, mm -hmm. guess who deals with the complaints? If it's personnel related personnel though. So yeah. there there's sometimes where it's gonna be good to have people in the room either way. But 
I, I do want to say, yeah. I make jest about doing mm -hmm. policy. It's, yeah. It is our entire purpose. So it's, it's, it's not like I it's don't It's the think most it's important job you have. I just I mean, joke about things. There's a lot of things that are important. Well it's, it's a so, lot of reading, though. I, yeah. and that's, that's, yes. and it's staring instructions mm -hmm. in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm excited to do it. We are happy for you two to do it. Okay, now I'm less excited. Where's my kitty cat? So am I, so will of the board, uh, am I hearing that perhaps bringing a committee back? Yes. And are, are we yes, comfortable please. with if Marjorie and Jason as the committee? Yeah, I would imagine they're very comfortable. <laughs> okay, so we, I will bring that, I will probably just bring it to the next regular meeting because it will be in simple, okay. similar to the previous 7.7. .7. Um, it will just be you officially taking action to establish a board committee and okay. um, and the purpose and all the things. So I'll write up kind of like what's the purpose, how often will we meet, what's the authority, right? Like how do you report to the board, that type of stuff. Yep, I'll put something together. Thank you. Anybody else? Discussion on committee? George? I have some stuff. I'd like to pass this out to the board here and each take a copy of that and when you don't that pass it to the board. So I, I have two committees that I would like to establish, uh, board committees, which I think are very important. Uh, the, the first is uh, what I'm calling the Academic Excellence Committee. And what it does is it, uh, a lot, well, <clears throat> what it does is we have a, people assigned, we'll have board members on the committee and hopefully we'll even have a, a staff member who will continually monitor and look at our academic quality, our improvement, where we need to improve, what we need to improve. Uh, and one of the ways I suggest we do that is talk to other local schools. If you, if you look in the, the rankings of schools, you'll say a number of them rank higher than us, some of them rank lower. It's all the ones that are actually doing things particularly well, I would like to borrow some of their ideas. And if we have this committee, the Academic Excellence Committee, I think it's going to be the board's, what I would call a visible promise to, to the parents and to the students that we are constantly working to improve our academics. We are doing that, but this is the way I think we can even strengthen that. And I would really hope that we consider, consider that and even have a, a person hired to do that. Uh, the second committee is what I would like to call a, a student teacher can do success committee and that is looking at all these uh, these wonderful things that the, the, the schools are doing and uh, encourage them in that help them uh, help them further and and encourage act, encourage competition in all these activities that that uh, will uh, allow for competition and my point in that is a couple things first of all if you have older students doing it, as you said, younger students will get on board. Get on board. It helps with um, several things. It helps with college scholarships. If you're good at one particular thing and you win a competition either locally, statewide, or even nationally, it, it, it's great for the student, it's great for the district, and on top of that, it's also great for real estate values in the area. If, you have, if you're winning contests, and the other one, if you're Academics are higher, people want to move here. They come here with the idea that they will have good students, good schools for their students, and their property values will increase. So there's a lot of good reasons to do it, and I, I'm passing these out to my fellow board members, and I, I hope they'll consider these uh, committees. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for George? I do. Um, I, I like the can do one. I think it sounds really great. How would you propose it's random? I mean, I don't, how many board members, who from the district? I would see there would be two board members and uh, and, and I'd also had discussions and I, I would like to see uh, actually a person hired to do it. I think I think improving academic excellence is, is something that one individual working daily and working with the administration. Do we have can, somebody already who does that? Um, our entire our district administration. No, no, I mean, we have somebody who like monitors just our academics to see our trends. Is that like Kathleen? That's yes. Kathleen. That's yeah. Kathleen. Our, we have a team of services folks that are dedicated and special education that are dedicated to working with principals and school sites
like he's saying, you know, go to other districts that are doing better, being able to have conversations. That's, that's part of, I mean, we like, for example, things related to student senate, right? There's been conversations about uh, uh, whether or not we wanted to establish a student senate. Like, we're going and visiting uh, school, a school district that has a um, award-winning student senate, right? So those are things that we, we go and visit school districts all the time that are doing things that are different than us. So um, I've got, we've been talking about advisory, for example, at the high schools and the intervention period. And uh, there is a school district, uh, San Benito High School District, um, that uh, we're gonna probably start looking at as a, uh, as a high school set of groups and having te teachers and principals go and visit San Benito and how they're implementing their intervention period. So this is something that's done kind of within Ed Services. And I know Scott has a, Academic excellence, or well, he actually, I think he's called it an or instructional excellence, which is yeah. a committee that you, yeah. yeah. And you have a committee for that? We just started. It's an internal district. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But is he allowed to be a part of that since this is his passion? Yes. I think you should get George, do you that. feel like you're not getting communicated as to the work that's being done? Not fully, no. Okay. So, because as I understand it, there are standing and ad hoc committees, so I'm trying to figure out, like, does this fit into, let's snap a line and see where we are and, like, benchmark? Well, I, I'd like to see it as a standing committee. What I'd like to see, ultimately, is a is an ongoing report on academics. Okay. We're, if we're going up, if we're going down, how we can go, how we can be better. And I've come to these meetings, and I think Carrie and the entire administration does a phenomenal job, but in two years that I've been here, I've very rarely heard people stand up and talk about academics. I'd like to see that on a regular basis. If it has happened, I haven't heard it. Okay. So, uh, and I think it's one of the reasons everybody is here, is to have strong academics. Well, I have a question. Didn't we have a present, uh, when we were at the other school the other, did, didn't she do a presentation on dashboard, yeah, dashboard uh -huh. on our academics yeah. and yes. how we, and how we uh, leveled the state? <coughs> that doesn't matter, it's probably the whole period that's what's important. <laughs> right, but isn't that how what she the presentation that she did? She, she did. I think mm -hmm. uh, what George is is saying also is let's see how we're trending. Also, what what like a comparison? What what were we doing before all the shutdowns? And then we know we're here right now. Were we here here? And are we trending upward? Right, George, you want to see? Well, what, I, I do, and I. And, and when I moved here it was several years ago, uh, looking for places in, in Lincoln, well, I didn't I wasn't initially looking in Lincoln because because Rockland had better school system. They had higher they had higher ranking, and the realtors would tell you that, and they'd say, well, you know, Lincoln's getting better, but Rockland is is, is better. And I, I don't know why we can't be as good as Rockland is as good as Granite Bay eventually. I don't I think we should be. There's no reason we shouldn't. Have that as a goal. I, it's not easy. It's going to be damn hard. But I think if we constantly are telling ourselves we need to move up, if we could do a little bit better than we are now, and I think we could do a lot better. So I'd like to promote this. Yeah, thank you. I have a question. Do you think uh, both uh, aspects of both of these could be in the same committee? I think they could. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Um, Scott, I'd like to hear a little bit more about what you just heard George talk about and what. The committee you just started and how that might tie in? So we're, we're looking at a, a more, um, I would say, a more detailed level of just discussing and talking about what are some some instructional practices that we need to try and reestablish because of COVID and the fact that they were kind of lost and, and so redoing that and consistently implementing some of those things that were that were helping our test scores. Um, and then looking at some data and looking at determining what are, where are we falling short, um, working with principals to look at data as well. And, and so there's, there is, I think there's some crossover that we could, that we could um, work on. I think I need to have more conversations with George about some specifics and what that might look like, but we're, we're looking at that. And then part of, part of the process also includes, you know, working with teachers and, and um, working hand in hand with them and, and, and making sure they're all on the same page with that process and what, what's needed. So, and then that takes some time and some meetings and some efforts and understanding. Mm -hmm. And so. to, to George's point, and, and, and he and I did discuss this when we, when we met, um, is there, de is there, you think there's, we have Kathleen, mm -hmm. right? Is there other dedicated staff that could help with this or 
was there a yeah, date where we you have, okay, you do have people Yeah, ready? we do, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and there's, I mean, there's a lot of things we're doing right now. Yeah. So we, yeah, we have a, quite a list. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Okay. So. Is what you're doing focused much on outreach or is it all internal? Right now it's all internal. It's looking at our data and seeing where we are and then trying to determine where our weaknesses are and then um, making some decisions about how we improve based on that data. I, I know we often talk about best practices, <coughs> but in my limited review of schools nearby, the schools that we drive to, uh, their, their academics are higher. And I, I would like to find out why they're higher and why we can't do some of the things they're doing. To they're, they're higher where, Drew? So like on the state dashboard? Like where specifically are we below them? Yeah, I'm just trying to understand it. Oh, uh, uh, the, the, the grant data is higher. It's okay. Like exemplary school. Uh, and the course, do you have the data or? Well, I don't know. I, don't have, I didn't. I, I can pull it up if you want to see if they are. I've looked at that. And, and there's several other schools like that, too. Are we, the data we're talking about, is that on the California School's dashboard? Is that what we need? Yes. Okay. okay. Talking about test scores as well. Test scores, yeah. too. Okay. Yeah. I, I think I have the same group. goal at Georgia. I want to speak number one. What are we going to do to be number one? We should be number one. Yeah. And so that, I think that's what he's looking for, ways, you know, to, how do we get, you know, how do we find out what they're doing and maybe look at the work that's to help us implement some of those same things. I mean, it could just be just the culture of the schools. The teachers are engaged and happy. I don't know, maybe we've made our teachers miserable. <laughs> so, you know, it's the way for the work. I don't think any of us don't I mean, want us to be it. number one. I'm trying to understand the specifics of how it would function, yeah, what would the requirements be? Yeah. What would the goal of the committee be? What would the obligations be? Which is okay. to, on our rankings and our academic rate, right? mm -hmm. our test scores and all that. And, and if actually that I knew specifically how to do that, I would mm -hmm. certainly write it down or hand it to you. Yeah, yeah. I don't have it yet. Yeah. Uh, I, we can find it. No, no, I'm saying like the specifics of the committee itself. Um, what would be the function of it? It would be to go and compare with neighboring districts. It, that's one of the things okay. I can do. And, and, and again, uh, adopt best practices where we find them, and we have to search them out. Yeah. What are they doing in their third grade classes that they may have ranked higher on their testing and their reading than we than we do? How can we help? You know, I think not doing that is, is is kind of we're negligent if we don't do that. And I and and I'm not well. Well, I know that there's the internal aspects in terms of looking at our own data and um, having conversations. Part of those conversations are research. What does the research say about best practices for improving data in these particular areas? And there are county um, county meetings. So, for example, us as county superintendents meet regularly. There are state network um, opportunities where you're constantly hearing best practices from school right. districts about things that they're doing. Um, the county um, education specialists meet regularly as well in talking about best practices. So, I'm. I, I guess my, my question is, how is this committee going to be different than the work that our, essentially, people with job descriptions within our district have? That's the job description. It's, it's the expectation that it's the work that's going to be doing. I think that we can be do a better job of being transparent about all of the things that we're doing and being um, clear about our processes for establishing curriculum, adopting instructional materials, and why we've chosen things, and how it's related to what our data is telling us about, because those are all in alignment with what the board policies indicate. Um, it's about doing our work more transparently so that people know exactly what it is that we're doing, because it is already happening. And so, well, yeah. I, I think, I think the board then has to pitch in and help with that. Right. And I think we can. And, and again, I would like to see a regular, every two week report on what we're doing on academics. And I, mm -hmm. I have not seen that. And I don't know why I haven't seen it. If you've seen it, tell me. But I don't think we see it. And I think that should be our one of our number one focuses. So. start that we're doing here, this is taking it to the next level, but it's also placing an importance for the board mm -hmm. to be paying attention to this and being part of it. 
And just like the dyslexia committee, um, we have made that a priority now through a committee and making this a priority now through a committee um, uh, really sends a message that we are really, really hyper-focused and partnering with your team um, who also thinks it's, it's important. So I do support, the, George, I do support one committee though, not two. Right. Okay. You can first. Yeah, yeah. Academic idea. excellence period. Academic <coughs> excellence accountability committee. You know, like we get a report or once or every two like months a month. Yeah, and show whatever you call it. <laughs> yeah, I think you could build in aspects related to accountability within, yeah. within kind of the you know the write up of yeah. what is this committee about. And so I would ask that, and we can bring this back. But I'll have have Scott and meet with George and kind of dial it in as it connects to the board bylaw, so that it is about governance and not about the management aspects in the day-to-day, -day, right? Like the work that, that staff has to has to do. Um, it's about, you know, the overall aspect, because, I mean, you would hear my staff tell you, that I've said time and time again, there's no reason we can't be one, right? And, and, and we should be, and-, and We're agreeing, right. we're just- we're Yeah, agreeing. and so it's, yeah, so- yeah. I yeah. Dur during that conversation, I think some sort of scorecard process that mm -hmm. can be brought back to the board, because I feel like the idea of focus being spent on where we're trending upward and, mm -hmm. you know, but I, I would hope all of us expect that that's the responsibility of the administration mm -hmm. and not necessarily, I mean, I hope I'm not the smartest teacher in this room mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm not a teacher, so, <laughs> um, I, you know what I mean? So I definitely want to make sure the work is empowered, but putting eyes on it is a really good idea. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. okay, so do we have uh, kind of the consensus of the board that to move it to the, to move it, like, to the next step that we did for yeah. the policy to the next step, like Carrie, you put something together? Yes, please. I, 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 I would, please go ahead. I don't want to. I second sorry. that motion. Okay. okay. And I would like to add the idea of an employee added to this. To, they said that they had staff, so well, that would be a discussion between we, Scott. We can have a discussion. He can brief you on that. I think it's that important. Mm -hmm. yeah. It would be important for us to see exactly who, her, who's in place right now that maybe we don't know about, okay. and then make that determination right. for us. And, and I think that when Scott meets with, with you, George, to kind of review this, he could, he could share with you our organizational chart, so you that's see that's the, great, the staff great. that we have that <coughs> is dedicated to doing this. Thank you. Yeah, that's Thank great. You. Okay, um, we're still on something like seven, right? Am I in the right area here? <laughs> it moved on a board committee. Seven points. Seven points. Yeah, seven points. You might be on seven, seven. We're on seven. Yeah. <laughs> Can you stop it? <laughs> it's been a long okay. day. Okay, I know. I'm sorry. Uh, is anyone taking a Yeah, no, I'm fine. Okay, yeah. all right, we're good. So, thank you. Uh, thank you, George. Do we need a vote? Uh, no, uh, we, we are no, so you've given direction, so we'll come back with official vote and action to establish the committee. Yeah, and that would be after kind of the write up and the true, truly outlining so that it is in accordance with board bylaws about purpose and all the things. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, anything else uh, for board committees? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, awesome. Thank you, everybody. I think that was a good discussion. So we have our two established. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 7.9, we have speaker Gus. I don't think I know. Um, I have had the pleasure of experiencing Miss Jessica Spade's leadership. And uh, for those who don't know, I'm speaking about her because I saw that she was a potential delegate for the California School Board Association. Um, and while she's pretty new to her post, um, I do believe that she has one of the most important tools in her toolbox to be a good representative uh, for our area, and that is courage. Um, because one of the things she stated is geographically, we're not fairly represented. We being you know, Placer, the Valley, um, you know, that sort of thing. Again, I must be I kind of find myself in the middle politically. Um, and again, now's a good time to say I don't want your job for what is it, 200 something dollars a month. I guess, uh, <laughs> I told Marjorie not to do this. Great spot on the time. See why I tie it up. But 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 um, no, it, it's it's a key position because what happens is 
but what I believe is 39 million people, a lot left, but maybe 38 million people still. And so what happens is it, it's very difficult to take a, a small district like in the Divide, in Georgetown, in Garden Valley, and, and, and you govern them the same way that you do Milpitas and Sunnyvale and, and, and San Francisco. So uh, communities matter. Their visions matter. Um, you know, volunteerism matters, uh, you know, working together to improve education uh, matters. And so I, I believe that Ms. Jessica Spade is a terrific representation as a mama for and someone who was an advocate for uh, rights during the last three years as someone who will go up there and will combat uh, some of the, the ideologies and, and state level um, mandates and things like that that have been pushed. So I just wanted to speak my two cents in favor of Ms. Spade uh, tonight. and. Hopefully that you know uh, moves in you know just a, just a, a little bit. So um, and then lastly, I mean I think it, her being able to work with Dr. George Shiraki, anybody who can spend time with a guy in that room uh, advocating for families is already a, uh, a valid soldier to me. All right, thank you. Great, thank you, Beth. Appreciate it. Okay, so uh, agenda item seven point nine, uh, CSBA uh, delegate. Elections. Yeah. So the board received the, uh, the letter that, that was attached, and this comes out uh, for potential voting on uh, delegate um, folks that are interested in serving as uh, uh, part of the assembly for Region 4D, which is what we are in, which is in Nevada, Placer, and Sierra County. Um, and there are two seats in our area and we can vote, or the board, not me, we, but the board can vote um, for no more than two candidates. And so there are two candidates that have um, put in to serve in the two seats. The board can choose to vote for one, both, or none. And, um, and then ultimately uh, we are looking for um, the board to take action on this um, and uh, make a decision about whether or not you want to submit a about. Okay. Any questions? Um, no, is this open discussion about it now? Yeah. So it's, it's uh, and it's Alyssa Fong from Roseville City uh, School District is um, is the incumbent, and then Jessica Spade uh, is from Classroom. I would like to support both of the ladies. I've met them personally; they're a great woman.
Okay, we'll have that to the future agenda. Yeah, we've we we talked a little bit about it already. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It'd be good yeah. for a discussion. Special Would you be <coughs> that often? Uh, I think just the jet. Yeah, I mean, okay. we haven't had, we have had um, uh, one endowment from the state to mm -hmm. the party, actually, okay. uh, yeah. part of the distribution. Okay. We were the beneficiary yeah. of the state, yeah. and um, but we don't, we don't really do proactive outreach. outreach or I, I would, I'd would like us at least to consider that. Right, right. Yeah. So I, I understand what you mean. And, and it I certainly think. makes sense with all the farms around here. But yeah, OK. We don't want to talk about it. But yeah, OK, perfect. Any more? I do. I have a couple. Okay. Um, HPV vaccine resolution. I gave it to Carrie. It's with legal. I'm going to agendize that for yeah, the next. Absolutely. Another one. For the next meeting. For the next meeting. You want to agenda as a conversation about it? No, I sent her a resolution for us. It'll be on the agenda for you to review and see if you approve it or not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I would like to review English 9 curriculum. I want a presentation as well. Agenda is that. Okay. And then I would like to have an emergency hearing about the book. Okay. Public hearing. Okay. I've, I've gotten more, I've gotten a lot of. You guys can't hear me. I feel like we're showing a huge divide amongst our students right now. Um, I've gotten a lot of messages, upset parents, upset their students are upset because being removed from the classroom, they're being they feel like they're being discriminated against now. They're being calling names. I think we need to handle this book situation as soon as possible in an effective way, especially before Lincoln High School starts it too. Stop. So I would like an emergency hearing. Is that what it's called? Meeting? Uh, Not a hearing meeting. I feel like I'm in court now. I don't know if anybody else agrees, or we can just agendize it for the next board meeting. It's up to you guys. But I'm asking for an emergency one. So we could agendize the review of the English language curriculum. Agendize the Yes. I want to do it. Yes. But I want to do talk discuss this book more. It would, would be part of the English 9 review of the, of the curriculum, because it's something that would is on the U.S. She's asking English, English 9. Okay, for separate, more urgent. More urgent. Uh, for the purposes of the board, what, taking action to? Taking action on the curriculum of this book currently right now at the Holbridge's High School. After several letters I received last night, I was really disturbed to hear parents saying that we're causing a divide in their own households with their children. and. After the last two years, this is the last thing we should be doing to the, the families and the kids. And if they feel like they're making their, they're letting their kids read a book that they don't approve of so that their kids don't get segregated and feel separated, and this is the last thing I want to be doing with these kids right now. You guys want That's what I'm here for. Can I add something uh, also in relation to the, uh, <coughs> to the curriculum review, the curriculum, a separate agenda item on the process? By which we, um, by which we notify, and the process by which we give uh, uh, alternatives. Because we, you, you, you right. So there's the controversial that, issues policy. Yeah. The yeah. Controversial. The controversial issues policy, but mm -hmm. uh, above that, of uh, how how we're going to address these types of things in the future, um, i.e., giving not required reading, but uh, choices, mm -hmm. and not segregating. Marjorie, did you have your concern addressed? Well, I, well, I well, asked for mercy here. I don't know if it'll tell a few of them. The board could, in, in the board has the authority to um, uh, determine curriculum and make decisions related to that. So if the board wants to agendize a special meeting ahead of the next regular meeting to consider removal of a book, um, from the current curriculum, then you have the authority to do that. So that's the question of whether or not that's the a direction of work. I'm not sure. That, was that what you were asking? Yes. Yes. Because that's for a special meeting before the next meeting to talk about specifically <coughs> what's, what's in front of us. I want to do as best for all involved. So. Uh, any comments on that question from the board discussion? No. No, I'm just looking at all of our meetings, what we got going on already for next week. So I'm just going to write on it. Yeah. Yeah. 
any discussion? No discussion? Anybody? We vote on this? Well, well it would be, uh, there, there's aspects of is, is the will of the board to consider removing this as a vote? Is that, is that where the board collectively stands and, I, I'm not, and the board feels we, that there's a need to consider removing it? Was the phrase removal or just discussion of? Not to remove it from the district. I am not a book banner at all. If you want your child to read this book, you should be allowed to let your child read this book. I do not think it should be part of the act curriculum required. And that if you don't want your child to read this, you have to be removed from the class to another class and be segregated from your students. It should be moved to the list of a of the proof of readings that you get to read when you get to do choice reading. You don't get a list. Right. I mean, I saw the ranking that Ariana did, which was awesome, yeah. but of course the choice was the last one on the list. I bet you if this book was on there, it would be higher. Right. And, and to be clear, students are not required to be removed from the classroom. So, okay, so I could, uh, I don't know if, I don't know if we need more clarification. Jen or Mrs. Pierce could speak in terms of, because our desire is for them to stay in the classroom. However, if yeah. parents, because the, the, the conversations that are occurring in class are related to the theme of leadership. And if parents don't feel comfortable even having some conversation related to the theme, and obviously there's gonna be subtle aspects related to the books that are differing, depending on who's opting for one versus the other, um, then we are providing an alternate and space. we need to stop it. that now. We shouldn't be doing that with these I kids. think we're getting very close to yeah, a brown act violation. Yeah, yeah. We cannot have this conversation without it having been agendized 72 hours ahead. Okay, well, I'm asking to have it, but yeah. an emergency yeah. meeting. Yeah. So, right. yeah. Yes. so um, is there any opposition or support of having a special meeting? A special meeting to do what? To review the ninth grade English curriculum? Is no. that what? So to consider removing it as a requirement it, as part of the current end. Okay. Well, that's why I'm asking. Because it, it, is, it, is mm -hmm. it is the book, and then you can choose an alternative. But, yes. Yeah, so. so, Albert, you were so talking okay. about having a discussion before yeah. the next two weeks. For a it would be a discussion and, and, be, and it would be agendized as discussion and action. Okay, uh, I hate to go around this again, but is it this book or the general way we're going to handle books like this? Which seem to make sense. The has requested because we, this, this book is currently being taught at the Fulbright High School right now. Okay. And it will be taught at Lincoln High School. Well, that shortly. could be part of the discussion, but I think we should have an overall discussion mm -hmm. where this will come up again. Yeah, that will be agendized. For but there's a, a the next potential meeting. need to act quickly and for the board for to take point. action. Yeah. We cannot yeah. take action. We must yeah. do that. And we yeah. cannot discuss it in this meeting. Yeah. And right. I'm sure Marjorie feels that the next meeting is too far out. All right. Which yeah. I would agree. Okay. So um, I would support it. Uh, I would support it, um, but that's. I'm just speaking for me. Um, I, I'm more than happy to have that discussion. Can I ask one question? This, if we have an emergency one, it is open to the public. It correct? is open to the public. Yes. yes. I want to hear both sides. <coughs> yeah, we're not getting both sides. I'm only getting one side. Right. May I make a suggestion? Yes. Can we go like talk about possibly agreeing with us before having a discussion about it for you guys? Just because it's hard to talk about the question. I've read the book. I don't know if that's the one. I read it. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I did read it. That's a good suggestion. I'm great reading it. In fact, I read the chapter 10 today while I was sitting there. Okay. Um, anybody else have a opinion on that? Yeah. I mean, I, I see a, a need for uh, a discussion, absolutely. Um, if, if everyone's feeling this need to have a discussion, then absolutely, yeah. we should have the discussion. Yeah. Because we can't talk about it, really. Right. Right, yeah. right now. Yeah. yeah. You okay? Everyone okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. Will you reach out for dates that work? I us? mean, I, I, a special board meeting has, we have, I think, what is it, 48 hours for a special board meeting or 24 hours? 48, 48 hours. So. If we were to get out an agenda item, we could opt, we could have the board meeting on Friday. Friday night. 
because not that I live yeah, in this site anyway. I live a real Friday day. We could do Monday. Saturday morning. Saturday morning available. Anyone else? We could do next Monday. I could do Friday. Not available Monday. No, I could do all day Saturday. What Friday? I'm not. I'm here Friday and I leave Saturday. So we should do Friday. If we could do Friday or okay, can we just reach out and figure that out later? Because I have to work with others too. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any more agenda items? All right. I have an agenda item, and I get some booze. However, I'm going to go ahead. Um, I think it's fair. Um, I would like to talk about raises for the board members because we are going to a lot of extra meetings. Uh, we are going to schools constantly. We are meeting the staff, and the, uh, I don't believe that the $200 a month even gets gets us here to the to the board meetings and to the extra board meetings. I think it's fair. Um, does anyone else have a comment on that, or would like they would they like to boo me? We can provide a provide a comparison with like, yeah. what other yeah. Yes. Other yeah. We we actually did that recently, and I will tell you that you're comparable to all the other yeah. districts. Yeah. Okay. Do sure. they do yeah. as much as we do? We we we, we, <laughs> we, we don't mind being the pioneers. Yeah. Okay. Is everyone okay with that agenda item? I, I want that. Uh, we're really an open because I want the public to hear what we're talking about. We're not going to do any behind, you know, any closed doors. Are we good with that? Okay, great. Yep. Yep. I've heard that you earned it. Thank you. <laughs> yep. So we're looking at Friday. Am I correct? Yes. Um, I, I don't know about Friday. I can do Friday in the afternoon after 3 o'clock. Today. Friday at like 4 o'clock? Mm -hmm. But we have to reschedule now. Friday at 4 o'clock. Oh, we're just hanging out all day. Why not? If I could do it at 4 o'clock at Friday. What time? 4 o'clock on Friday. 4 o'clock on Friday. It'll be in this room. Um, we'll have to check with the city. Okay. 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 All right. Thank you. Any more? Any more? Okay. All right. Upcoming meetings. March twentieth, we have our special meeting for the board of uh, trustees, talking about facilities. Now, Friday, March tenth, we have a meeting here at four o'clock to talk about the the. The hate you give book, and then uh, March 21st, we have a regular meeting uh, board of trustees at 12 Bridges Elementary School. And with that, we will adjourn the meeting.